Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I'm so happy to see you all. It's going to be a fantastic broadcast, and I'm so glad you're here. I do have one thing to say. I'm a little loopy. I seem to have caught whatever it is my kids had. Because they go to school, it's the beginning of the school year, and of course they were fine all summer, even with all their summer activities. The moment they step foot in school, wham! Everyone's got a cold. My son caught it first, then my daughter caught it, and now of course I've got it. Ugh. I am high on Dayquil. It's, I just, there's no other way to go about it. I've been chugging Dayquil. I've got my box of tissues. I was sneezing like a madman during the broadcast yesterday. I couldn't stop sneezing, and now I know why. It's because I caught whatever the kids had. So just letting you know, I'm not in my top shape today, but I'm here. I'm here, and I'm ready to play some Starfield. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I just might have to blow my nose a lot, and my voice is going to sound like there's a bowling ball in my sinuses. That's all. But aside from that, I'm, I'm in top form. I've never been in topper form than the form I'm in now. Now. You can hear it, too. It's just, oh. Anyway. Wow. What a day. What a day we had yesterday. Uh, we finally got uh, progress with Sarah. We were able to complete her faction quest. Her, not her faction quest. Her affinity quest. We got to hear more about her story. And, uh, you know, we kind of stopped right before, you know, establishing a commitment with her. We, we romanced her, but we didn't exactly commit to her. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how that plays out. Can we now go forth and romance other companions as long as we don't commit to them? That'll be interesting to see. It's weird. I don't know, maybe I just don't understand how this works, but it's weird that you can sit there and from the very beginning of of your um, affinity dialogue with Sarah. You're sitting there saying, I love you, Sarah. Sarah, you're the woman to me, for me. I've never met a, a woman I love more. I, I love you, Sarah. And that's not commitment. That's not marriage. That's just like, you know, dating, really. As far as I know, you can go through all of that, tell Sarah you're head over heels for her. She says the same thing to you. And then he can go off and date someone else. You know, it's okay. She won't get mad or anything. I'm curious to see how that'll resolve because that's kind of where we're at in the story right now. Mr. Uranium Fire became a Silver Ox. Thank you so much, Mr. Uranium Fire. Julian Z says, uh, good morning, Ox. So good to see you on this Starfield Tuesday. Hope you feel better soon and have a fun but loopy Starfield. Wonder how that'll affect your decision potential. <laughs> Hilarity incoming, lol. <laughs> I mean, the, the loopiness is just sort of making me stumble at the keys here and giving me a difficulty sitting up straight. Uh, in terms of my cognitive abilities to make decisions, I have never been more lucid than now. I am at my lucidness, the height of my lucidity. Caden <sighs> uh, Shade says, knock, knock, who's there? A little old lady. A little old lady who, congrats, you now know how to yodel. A little old lady who, oh, a little old lady who. Thank you, Caden Shade, that's great, I love that one, haven't heard that before. And that's saying something after 10 years of scotch and smoke drinks and lots and lots of dad jokes. Wolfie Miwi says, I'm here with my big mug of coffee, Oxhorn. That's great, I finished my mug of coffee, I, was t I needed something, I woke up and it was just like, I don't know if you've ever had those days where you wake up and you can't open your eyes. You're so sleepy that your eyes are glued shut and you kind of just got to go eh. <sighs> to open your eyes and get out of bed. Ugh. That's And then I was just like stumbling downstairs and I had to get coffee and I just guzzled it like my life depended on it. And then I felt a little sick, so then I guzzled the day quill like my life depended on it. And then I felt even sicker, so then I guzzled water. It's funny how you always come back to water. And the water helped. I got the coffee in first, then the day quill, and then the water. That's what really did it. So I'm feeling better with the water. 
Anyway, enjoy your morning coffee. Bustavo Plays says, you should roleplay a character afraid of commitment. <laughs> Just flirt and date everyone, you know? Like a guy in his 20s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I like that. That sounds great to me. I rushed into commitment way too fast in my 20s, so now that I'm in my 40s, I'm going to relive my 20s in Starfield by just having a hard time uh, getting into commitment. <laughs> Present 99 says, hope you get well soon, although I already heard good things about the American healthcare system. Oh wait, lol. Anyways, good to see you and keep blowing that horn. Thank you, Present 99. Yes, American healthcare system aside, at least Dayquil is over-the-counter medication, and I can medicate myself at will. Julian Z says, also, Ox, did you see the FTC leak from Bethesda? The dates seem to have been thrown off by the pandemic, but it seems that a Fallout 3 remaster is coming? What? No. They aren't, are they? Are they? They aren't. Are they? They are? No. They better. That sounds, I mean, at, to have everybody all, get get everyone all excited about this. I mean, it's, have they, they haven't said anything officially, right? This is all leaks and stuff. You know what? I've been saying from the longest time that if they were going to remaster anything, Fallout 3 would be a good one. I mean, I, don't, I didn't necessarily want to remaster of Fallout 3 because we already have Fallout 3. But the problem with the Fallout 3 we already have is that it doesn't work. On most machines, you can't you can't purchase it and install it on Steam and then play it on 99% of computers. In order to get it to run, you've got to install a variety of different mods and then you have to just be lucky. Like, I can get it to work on that computer. I can't get it to work on this computer. With the same mods installed, the same Steam installation, it's just, it's, it's nuts. It's crazy. So, if there was a game for them to remaster, I'm glad they're doing Fallout 3, because it's a fun game. What's really going to be interesting is whether it holds up. Because it's a fun game for the, for what it was in the time in which it was published. There are a lot of things about Fallout 3 that wouldn't really hold up by modern standards. Companions come to mind. All of the companions are really surface level and thin. Really, Sharon is the only companion that has any depth, and that's just, and that depth ends after we get him, right? The quest that we have to go through to get Sharon is about as interesting as Sharon is as a companion. What they really did right with Fallout 3 was the atmosphere. They, they nailed the atmosphere. The look of it, the feel of it, the terror of it, the starkness of it was just exceptionally done the, the metro system, I mean, I did an entire series on the metro system of Fallout 3 just because it was so well done. And it was the metros. It was getting lost in the tunnels of the DC metro system that really caused me to fall in love with Fallout 3. So will they be able to recapture that if they remaster it? God, I hope so. I, I just, I really, I really, really hope so. So, I mean, I hope you're right, Julian Z. I'm not going to get my hopes up, but, but I'm, I hope you're right. Alt Brendel says, the day of questionable choices. Is that today? Are we going to be making a lot of questionable choices? Probably. I mean, we're going to be working with the UC, so. Obi-Wan Kenny says, tip, if you're over-encumbered, use the power personal atmosphere, and you can run without using O2. I see. Is that an artifact power thing? I haven't, I haven't gotten that yet. Julian Z says, yeah, Ox, you can Google the FTC sheet and see Bethesda's whole slate of upcoming games. The dates are off, but it's really interesting. Read what of what might be. Well, that's exciting. I hope it's true. I hope it's true. Caden Shade became a Silver Ox. Thank you so much, Caden Shade. Toby Noble on Facebook says, remaster New Vegas, but complete it to how Obsidian originally wanted it. Wouldn't that be cool? Because Obsidian really didn't get a chance to finish Fallout New Vegas. They did a really good job for the time constraints that they had, but um, you know they they didn't get to complete it. Uh, complete it. Uh, uh, Josh released a mod on Nexus Mods that completed it in more of the way that he envisioned the game. Josh was the director of the game that he en envisioned the game to be. So you have to install a Nexus Mod mod to get it to get Fallout New Vegas the way the developers and designers uh, uh, envisioned it to be. Um, so would, would it be great to see a remastered version of New Vegas? I mean, on one hand, yes. But on the other hand, again, 
it's the it's the limitations of the engine that the game was published in that give it such its its unique character, right? Could they capture that unique spark in the modern creation engine? I don't know. The voice acting as well. <laughs> I mean, Fallout New Vegas voice voice acting was not necessarily good. Uh, some of the characters are very memorable. Ulysses, for example. Caesar, another great voice. Uh, some of the characters, like every old woman in the game and every old man in the game, <laughs> the same voice over and over again. It'll be really interesting if they ever remaster New Vegas. But uh, the old New Vegas was just a gem. Greg Williams says, Hey, Ox, what has more lives than a cat? A frog, because it croaks every night. <laughs> I'm here all night. Play on good, sir. Thank you, Greg Williams. Julian Z says, is there a remaster? Will you stream or just play it? I don't think I'll do lore on it because I've already done lore on Fallout 3. Just just everything about Fallout 3. But I, I would definitely stream it just to see, just to sort of relive that experience again. That would be a lot of fun. Laura says, that one old lady with the most pathetic... Yeah, well, I think it was the old lady in uh, uh, at the Nellis Air Force Base. The, the lady in charge of the Nellis Air Force Base, you, base, you talk to her, and when you say goodbye, she's like, Bye. Hello. Bye. Just the worst voice acting ever. It was so bad, but it was hilarious. hilarious. And then the line delivery of that one, um, uh, that one con at Camp Searchlight. Just outside Camp Searchlight, what was his name? Anyway, he was complaining about uh, what the um, the NCR did to his to his family, and clearly the voice actor didn't understand the concept. He was just reading the context. He was reading off of a script. <laughs> He's like, the NCR, they came to Camp Searchlight and they destroyed everything and they shot me and then I was dead, my family. But then you read the the dialogue and it's supposed to be like. It's supposed to, it's a it's a full stop and then it goes my family dot 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 so the delivery should have been my family but he's like my family <laughs> it was really bad Oscar Oscar the guy out in the cave outside of Camp Searchlight really really awful but funny as heck Fuzzy Numbers says Weird West is the Fallout game I always wanted I I've, I've seen a lot of really positive stuff about Weird West. Um, Maybe I'll have to check it out. It's been recommended on the program multiple times. Okay. Gotta empty the sinuses again. Hold on a second here. Jeez. I'm sorry, I know it's gross, but it's gonna be like this all night. Gosh. Ugh. Okay, let's dive in. Where were we? Uh, let's keep getting my game saves all mixed up because one I'm using for lore videos and one I'm using for actual progression during my live stream. Do I have the right character selected here? Is this the right date? Uh, the launch. That was 15 minutes. The exit save was 15 minutes? Now that must have been, okay, so this must be right. President 99 says bad voice acting. <laughs> Everything Benny says in Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to say anything because uh, what's his name? That, that, that character from Friends? What was, what was the name of the actor? I keep, why, why am I forgetting his? It's not Matt LeBlanc, it was the other guy. Chan, was it Chandler? Anyway, they, they hired one of the actors from Friends to do the voice acting for Benny. And um, it was okay. It was okay, but it wasn't, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. Greg Williams says, could the next... To, you know who did a really great job? Yes, man. Yes, man was perfect. Caesar was perfect. Ulysses was weird. But okay. I kind of like Ulysses. Like, I'm, I'm all right with Ulysses. There were some really good ones and some not so good ones. Matthew Perry, yes, thank you. Matthew Perry did uh, Benny. 
Um, Greg Williams says, could the next Starfield lore video be on what happened to Earth? Also, I have moved on to the Underdark in Baldur's Gate 3. Thank you, Greg. Um, I, 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 I currently have an Earth lore video in the works. I can't finish it until I get all of the landmarks that you can find on Earth. Because the story about what happens to Earth is really short. It's just, it comes out as a, a snippet of dialogue from Sarah towards the beginning of the game. And we see it referenced in a few little books throughout the game. Um, and then of course there's that uh, big display we go through uh, at the UC Vanguard place. So, I mean, it's easy to tell that story. The really interesting thing is how Earth looks now. And so we've got London, we've got New York. I need to get all the landmarks first before I can do a video on Earth. So I plan on doing it. I just don't have the footage necessary just yet. The lore video I was working on was the ECS Constant. I worked on that all weekend. I was I was gonna be working on it all week. And I thought, okay, Monday's gonna come easy. I'm gonna go to the ECS Constant. I'm gonna see how everybody's doing there. We're gonna turn in the quest, family ties or whatever it's called, and then talk to Abe in the, bo in the, in the bottom of the ship and say that we met his family member at Neon. But then we can't find the ship. So now I can't finish the video. I've got everything uh, recorded. I, I recorded like three hours of audio over the weekend. I did multiple different endings, but I can't get the end of this one ending, which happens to be the ending that I chose because I can't find the ship. And now I could probably use console commands, but I really don't want to do that. I, I will if absolutely necessary, but I can't get that video done until I capture that bit of footage. So hopefully we'll be jumping from system to system in the broadcast today so that we have more opportunities to stumble upon that ship as a random encounter. Uh, but yeah, I've got so many lore videos that I want to do and it's the time. It's really difficult to stream this for four to six hours a day and also do a lore video while, you know, being a parent and all that jazz. But I, I'm going to stop complaining. I'm not complaining. I love my life. I love my life. Everything's great. <laughs> and I'm not complaining. I just got to get the work done. Carter Valdez says, I like Starfield, but the bland color palette of the game makes me out of it. What should I do to quell this? You know what? Um, I don't have the same problem as you with the color palette, but the nice thing is that with the Bethesda games, you can mod them with ENBs. Uh, in every Bethesda game that I've played so far, from New Vegas to 3 to 4 to, well, I mean, not even 76, we can't yet. But in all of the others, you can install ENBs, which allow you precise control over the color palette and the mood of the environment. Um, so I would just go on to Nexus mods. I know that there are plenty of Starfield mods out there already. Go on to Nexus mods and search for different Starfield ENBs, and I bet you anything. I haven't looked yet, personally, but... If it's anything like Fallout 4, I bet you anything there are already some wonderful ENBs that change the color palette of the game. ENBs are pretty easy to install as well. Obi-Wan Kenny says, Ox, there's a lot more to Earth's story later in the game. Oh. Well then, great. I'm glad I waited. I'm glad I waited to, to publish that video. Present 99 says, Earth video? Please wait with the video. All will be explained. Okay, uh, well then I'll wait. It's a good thing I'm waiting. Apparently something happens with Earth later in the story that I didn't realize. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't jump the gun on that. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't hear what happened to Earth and then the very next day say, here's the full story of Earth. Magnetosphere, gone. Solar radiation, desert. Thanks for watching, everybody. Here's the link to my shop. I'm glad I didn't do that. I will definitely wait now. Whisper Fire says, you will need to do a quest titled Unearthed in the main story. It explains what happened to Earth. You must play that first before releasing the video. Wow, I'm glad we had this discussion live because I didn't know about that. I was waiting for all of the, the snow globes. I was waiting for all of the book locations, but it looks like there's more during the plot. See, this is why I shouldn't be really doing lore videos until I actually complete the entire game. That's what I do with Fallout 4. I played Fallout 4 on my own, you know, before I started creating content for my channel and did as much as I could and fell in love with the universe before I started doing lore videos. But doing lore videos while I'm simultaneously discovering the game is, is tricky. But then I don't want to miss out on this opportunity either. So. Oh, where's my, I need something to drink. All right.
Okay, so we've finished Sarah's story, right? So let's uh, let's get rid of her. If I can help you with anything, just say the word. What? We can flirt with her again? Hold on a second. I thought we finished her entire affinity thing. We can continue to flirt with her? Uh, flirt. Can I tell you something? You can tell me anything. Oh, being in love with you is like a dream come true. You are the most important person in my life now and always in all my life. I never believed I'd find the love we share. Since the moment we met, I've been lost in those beautiful eyes. I could never imagine loving someone the way I love you. Every time you say those things, it feels like I'm in heaven. I think it's time we went our separate ways. Whatever you think is best. Okay. <laughs> Let's go find someone else and uh, do that person's quests. Or try to build affinity. Let's see, where's Ali... Al 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 What's her name? Alandra something. She's usually sitting out. God. Mando Cool Cat says, quick heads up for your upcoming Earth lore video. Some locations on Earth are only discovered after the main story is finished. I see. Okay, thank you for that. I'll have to bear in mind. Bear that in mind. In mind it will be born. Bear it I shall in the brain. It's good to be on the boat. Well, lodge gets stuffy sometimes. I could try to finish his story, but he annoys me. All right, let's what try. What is it? Andrea. Is something amiss? Of course. Are you ready? There we go, we got Andrea. We got Uh, okay, so all I can get there, one, 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 uh, three. I could get rid of bear something, because I don't want that anymore. Uh, we got some notes we can get rid of too. Okay, let's go back to our room and drop some stuff and then we're ready to go. Ooh, why is everything swimming? Okay, let's uh let's see. No, let's go to Deposit some of our notes. Dear Julia, that's the quest item. Our lost hair, I stole that, right. And boy, that's another quest item. All right, uh, we're good to go. Matt Rowland says, lots of chatter the last week about Horizon Forbidden West becoming released for PC very shortly. No official news yet, but stay tuned. Thank you for that one. When it's released, I will play it. Okay, Power From Beyond, Cassiopeia 2, and that's the artifact. The devils you know speak to Captain Marquez. I just spoke to Vay Victus, a former UC admiral and a man who's supposed to be dead. He asked me to track down and deal with a rogue weapon scientist named Reginald Orlas. He believes Orlas is hiding near the planet Etheria in the wolf system, and that I should speak with the local head of Vanguard of the Vanguard, Captain Marquez, to get specifics. Okay, so to the wolf system. Whew. Always a satisfying moment to return to your ship. Okay, here we are. Welcome to the den. If you have business, feel free to land. All right. 
Zartu says, Zox, you may want to buy some ammo before you head out. Oh, yeah, I am completely out of ammunition, aren't I? Oh, I've got ammo for this weapon. 600 rounds, and I've got over 1,200 rounds for this one. <laughs> but everything else is really, really low. Tony J says, my personal goal in games, never buy ammo. That's a sucker's game. Yeah, yeah, that's my goal, too. I'm not going to buy ammo. That's for suckers. I understand this station was once quite the luxurious place for UC military commanders. Based on what I see, I find that very hard to believe. Looking to lodge a complaint? Then you want UC security, not the Vanguard. Ah, uh, no complaints. Actually, I'm with the Vanguard Supra et Ultra, Captain. Or, uh, yeah, let's try that. Oh, apologies, Captain. Didn't recognize you without the uniform. So, what can I do for you? Um, let's see. There's a wanted man hiding out in this sector. I need to find him. Think you got some bad information. If there was a wanted man in our skies, he wouldn't still be out there. Unless... Are you talking about the Warlock? There's been rumor of a ship out there for years now. Doesn't respond to hails, never docks. More than a few amateur investigators have tried to find it. And at least two never came back. Ethereus debris fields are plenty dangerous if you're not used to flying in them. But oh if you're suggesting it might not have been the fields that got them, well, I can give you the coordinates of the Warlock's last sighting. Interesting. Present 99 says, small tip here, upgrade your power generator on your ship when you can. The extra power really helps. Oh, and finish the first Vanguard quest already, but be careful... Uh, very easy to get your companions angry based on your decisions. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, President 99. Ashton Snap says, uh, greetings. You are now a space banana. Well, I guess I should stay away from space monkeys then. Anything I should know about the den? Things you should know? The den's not really that kind of place. This is a quiet assignment. Keep an eye out for pirates... Make sure smuggling's kept to a minimum. Occasional rescue job out in the debris fields. Otherwise, it's mostly long haulers and staying ready for the day the Collective wants another round. Or House Varun comes back in force. Anything else you can tell me about the Warlock? I mean, I honestly thought it was just a story board haulers told to amuse each other. But if the pilot of the Warlock really has been dusting our people, well, hopefully you're about to make our skies a whole lot safer. What's so dangerous about that part of Athera's orbit? Well, the original Den Star Station was destroyed decades ago during the Serpent's Crusade by marauding House Varun Zealots. Big part of the remains from those battles ended up gathering around Etheria, forming a nasty debris field. Every now and then, some headstrong scrapper comes limping back because they hit an 80-year-old mine. Or sometimes they don't come back at all. Though, maybe it's not just the field that's been picking them off. <clears throat> Shane Gibbons says, Ox, if you, if you can, don't destroy the Warlock ship, but instead take out its engines and board it. All right, I'll do my best to do that. I'll take those coordinates. Sure thing. Here. This should get you pointed in the right direction. Good hunting, and stay safe. Ship EM weapons damage systems at random, possibly stunning, stunning enemy engines for boarding? Okay, so it's giving me this tip because it wants me to board the vessel. I am, hands down, the best pilot in this dump. Don't let anyone tell you different. Wow, Bastion Graf. Only a matter of time before I get promoted out of here. How'd you get assigned to the den? What does it matter? I'm gonna be out of here before you can blink and this will all be behind me. That reporter didn't put you up to this, did he? 
I, I already told him. It was a misunderstanding. Uh, an accident. My flight record was spotless otherwise. You like flying for the Vanguard? You kidding? It's what I was born to do. Wait, I, I mean flying is what I was born to do. This Vanguard thing? <sighs> Temporary. Only a matter of time before I get called up to the Navy. Before you know it, I'll be a captain. No, wait. Admiral, yeah! You seem pretty confident about your abilities as a pilot. Well, yeah. Why wouldn't I be? Oh, right. You haven't seen me fly. If you had, you'd know how good I am. Um... I bet I could fly rings about you, or I'm sure you're fantastic, or I find that those who are truly skilled rarely need to advertise it. What? I'm not advertising anything. I'm a pilot. For the Vanguard. Are you even paying attention? I'd offer to let you fly along on my next mission, but, uh... Oh, man, I nearly forgot. L listen, I need a favor. I've got an application for a promotion in the Vanguard, but I haven't heard anything back. It's been a while. Their reply must have gotten lost along the way. It happens. We're really far from New Atlantis. Anyway, would you mind going <laughs> there and following up for me? Shouldn't you be the one checking on this? Yeah, I mean, probably, but you know how it goes. I leave here and then something terrible happens and I have all this guilt because I wasn't here to save everyone. All right. Sure thing. Be right back. Just like that? Wow, that's great. I'm not going to forget that you're doing this for me. This is just the start of my climb up the ranks. You'll see. Okay, you're going to want to talk to Commander Tuwala. I'm sure he's aware of me because I've sent him a few messages now. Just bring back whatever message for me so I can get out of here, okay? Really appreciate it. Okay, re, -re okay, application. Then. Can I edit my... You should inspect your ship for heat leeches every couple landings. They'll cause plenty of havoc if left unchecked. Got anything Services. you need to offload? Trade Authority is always buying. Keep... Okay, no problem. Uh, Alright, President 99 says upgrade my power generator. Let's go to upgrade ship. Weapon, weapon, reactors. Weapon, weapon, reactors. Required skill piloting. Okay, how do we upgrade it? 21,000. Okay, this is worse. Power goes down, repair rate goes down, reactor health, hull. It's all worse. Yeah, that's a downgrade. I could work on weapons here. So far, everything looks pretty similar. Worse, 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 worse. Let's go to the end here and see if we can find something. Here we go. Now this'll be, well, this is a missile launcher. Fire rate goes way down. I mean, it seems like I may already have a pretty decent weapon installed. The 300 PH as Z SX laser. Preston 99 says when you're higher level also, completing this quest unlocks other reactor types. There's definitely one better. All right. Well, I mean, I think I've got the best reactor that I can have now. What I don't have is an alternate weapon system. So let's go to the ship builder and see if we can find some place where we can attach some missiles. Uh, like, uh, right there. Weapons. 
All right, I want I want missiles, cannons. Let's go down here. Missile launcher. Here we go. Oh, that requires starship design. Ah. These all require starship design. Okay, particle cannon. Um Okay, so we could use the CE-49 Missile Launcher. This one does more damage. Same range. Takes more power. So, at Atlatl. At Atlatl. It's better than all of these. These two also, and that, but those are worse. Okay, it looks like the best option we have is the Atlatl missile launcher. How much is this? 7,000, not bad. One error. Flight check. The ship has a weapons, weapons that must be assigned to a group. Okay, um, okay, how do I do that? Uh, unassigned. Weapon one, zero, weapon one, weapon two. Oh, I see. Weapon two is the missile launcher. There we go. Okay. That makes sense. Missile launcher, railgun, and laser. Oh, so that's how they do it. I've got three weapon assignments, and I can choose... Which one to add? Well, okay, let's take a look at weapon zero. Let's see if we can upload. Uh, oh, this this is great. So the flight check is good. All right, so weapon zero is the Reza 3000. Let's see if we can find it. There it is, the Reza 3000. Let's go to... Um, Edit. No. Let's go to Can I upgrade it? No, that actually requires rank two of Starship Design to use, so it's probably better than anything that I could add. Alright, so we'll just keep it there for now. But we've got missiles. Oh, I could put another one there. Let's put another one there. The at atoll. President 99 says, Oh, you do not have the starship design skill. I don't know if you can upgrade the reactor then. Sorry for the misunderstanding. And click on unassigned and assign the weapon you want. Thanks. I, I do believe I figured that out. Um, oh. I guess I can't put that there. I'm not sure why as I was able to put this one there. So, yeah, I can't put that there. I could put another laser, but I can't put another missile launcher. Huh, I wonder why. What about auto turrets? Auto alpha beam. I remember reading that you could, uh, or somebody in chat said that I could have auto turrets or something. There's an auto cannon, smaller auto cannon. I guess I can't put them there. There's a cargo container in the way, says chat. Oh, is that why? Yeah. It's the shape of it. Oh, that's frustrating. All right. Well, what can I put here? Um, a missile. I can put this missile launcher. Does far less damage. But hopefully I can assign it to the missile group and then I can shoot both of them together. Um, this works. Let's try this. And then flight check. Weapons. Sh 
Ship has more than three different weapons. Oh. But it's not. It's not it's not a different weapon type. Let's assign the No. Weapon two is the Atl Atl. Okay, so uh, we can't have it. Uh, what about auto turrets? There's a skill for auto turrets, says Hendrik. All right, so I can't I can't do auto turrets then. Well, that's all right. At least we added missiles, and it looks like it's working. Man, I'm loving this ship. And it only cost us 7,000 credits. That's not too bad. Flight check. All systems normal. Oh, anytime I make a change, all items will be moved to the cargo hold. This is why I'm never going to be able to decorate my starship. Because anytime I do, if I make a change, it all gets done away with. But there we go. There we are. All right. Three weapon systems now. Looking good. Caden Shade says, not a fan of auto turrets. They don't stop firing for boarding. Taking over a ship can be lucrative. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, then maybe it's a good thing I didn't do auto turrets. Well, I mean, I've never boarded a ship, though, so it'll be interesting to finally board one. Jammin' Cohen says, get an EM weapon. You can disable the ship. I mean, if I just take out the engines, I can disable a ship, too, right? Tell you what, let's do a hard save here, and we'll go and do the dogfight, and see, uh, see what happens. If I can't board it without using an EM, without installing an EM weapon, then I can always come back here and try again. Andrea.
That's father's voice actor. That's the voice actor for father. What on earth is going on? Pilot emergency detected. Hatch override engaged. Oh. He died. File deletion cannot be completed. Ending process. He committed suicide. Syringe. Is there a way to get to get to him before he commits suicide? UC Science Division ID or Lace Reginald credits or Lazy's lab coat. Dr. Reginald or Lays. And there's the lab coat. Uh, it's not very good, but that's what it looks like. He was a scientist. Science division. Well, that's why he was uh, gurgling. He injected himself before we could get through the door committed suicide. What a bummer. I was really hoping we could have talked to him, especially since they hired Father's voice actor to, uh, to do his voice. Personal computer. The ability on his clothes is excellent, says Chad. Is there an ability on his clothes? Chance to craft weapon mods without using resources. Oh my god! I completely missed that! It's not a legendary item, and yet it has an ability? Chance to craft weapon mods without using resources. That's great! That's amazing. Thank you so much. All right, let's see the lore. Personal computer. Personal logs. Deleted. Oh, come on! I mean, I get it. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Error, file corrupted, partial recovery, complete displaying. Delivery is complete. Item was exactly as asked. Never imagined this was possible. You do amazing work. Only two entries. For the things you've done, won't get a trial, lock you in a cage. Rest of life, no way for a man to live. When they come, you kill them or show them you won't be caged. Hmm. Okay, well. This is an interesting ship. I wonder if we can add it to our fleet. How many ships can you have in a fleet? Is it annoying if I say, at least it is a dry heat? Yes, I would call that annoying. Man, I'm encumbered. Harvested organs! Oh no. Well, we are in the wolf system. Sword of Damocles. Did we read this? Yes, yes, this is the reptilian thing. Yeah, we read that. Urban Operator Outfit, 5% O2 Recovery. I'm just now realizing that the secondary outfits we can wear. 5% Intimidation Chance. Interesting. Panacea, nice. A 
Okay, we've got a downstairs here as well. Grapes. Research station. But I should probably use it when I have access to all of the scrap. Okay. Recon stem. Alright, let's go downstairs and see if there's anything interesting downstairs. You may be trying to take a little too much on. Yeah, I'll literally. De I'll deposit it when I get to the ship. Another terminal. Space helmet display. Hey, expert lock. Could do that, but then the only one there is that. So we can't do that. We can't do that. So this is the only spot available for that. But I used the other one. That overlap. Crap. Might have made a mistake here. Um, if we do that, then we've got one to the right. We don't have anything that's got one to the right. We've got one to the left. It's mirrored, so maybe we don't have to use that. Yes. No. No. Yes. So that's the only spot that's going to fit. And there we go. Boom. Oh, that was way too annoying. And it's not even any good. Hey, Chameleon Deep Recon Pack, Battle Stim, Nutrients. Oh, Master Luck! Oh, the Expert Luck! No! Oh, that's another Master! Alright, hold on. Okay, bottom two. Let's just focus on the top. So, top, 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 top. Middle, top, middle, middle, middle. Okay, this is the only one that's only for the top. So let's see what we can do here. Yes, that's great. Because then, then we can sync that and then put this in here. It's going to make it easier. Gustavo Play says, with a cigar, you sound like Adam Sandler and Waterboy. H2O. 
Gatorade. No! H2O! Alright, so yes. 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 Okay, this is one. This is only for the top. Oh! Oh, and look at that! Oh. But, because we used the other one, that's not <laughs> So we're gonna have to figure out a different solution. There's just so many with these freaking master locks. I mean, we could do that. And then we could finish it off with that. I mean, that would work. Uh, let's see if we can find one just for the bottom. Alright, this is just for the middle. That's great. So then we need a threefer. If we use that there, then we need uh, one, two, three, four. And they're not close together. Now that also is only for the middle. If we put that there, then we need another one, two, three, four. And they're not close together. Wait, no, but that's got overlap. That would work, though. But that's got overlap. So it's one of those. Right, if we use that for the middle, we can't use that for either of them. driving myself crazy with this. That's only for the top, but we can't use that there. So we need this, that, and then... But we're not gonna get one. I think I messed it up. overthinking it, I think. Worth it. Doggone it. Well, I've used all my auto slots. All right. Back here, all middle two, all top three, top. Yeah. Okay. That does it. All right. Well, 
we're up. No. All right, so we could do that plus that, but that's going to leave us with a couple over there. Ah. So then we don't want to do that. We want to use this. Okay. All right, and we didn't have to use any auto slots. Frost wolf. Ooh. Two freaking master locks. Jeez. Hey! Oh, this is better than what I've got. Refined shock troop, balanced pack. I miss out on the legendary effects, anti-ballistic, fastened, plus 20 to carry capacity, and reactive. But it's a balanced boost pack, greater physical, greater energy, greater EM. And I swap five thermal to put it into airborne. Well, that's a shame. It's got slightly better stats, but without all of those legendary effects, it's not nearly as good. Okay. There we go. I think we've uh, looted everything. So, how can we commandeer this vessel? That's the question. I guess I sit in the cockpit. We're not authorized to pilot the ship. This ship has been rendered inoperable. Well, then what do I do? What do I do to repair it so that I can move it? This ship comforting. Fiddler the Helper says, I guess this one's not stealable. They do that with ships involved in the story, so you can't easily, easily collect a bunch. That's a shame, because I did the same for the uh, the diplomat ship, um, for the, the governor on Deimos. I wanted to steal that ship as well, but I couldn't. The two ships I've actually boarded successfully, and I can't steal them. What a shame. Okay. Ooh, we've got contraband. We need to go to the den. Den to approaching vessel. Docking approved.
Okay, before we do that, let's stow away all of our unnecessary stuff. Okay, we've got cargo hold, which is here. Oh, they... What's the point of storing things in my captain's locker if every time I modify the ship, it all gets dumped in there? All right, let's go to uh, resources. I'm holding a lot of resources. Let's store all resources. Oh, no, that's in the ship. Uh, am I holding? I'm holding some resources. Let's store all resources. Uh, and then let's go through our aid and store any aid that um, we need as a crafting component. And I had some lettuce, didn't I? I think I stored it. Okay, uh... Harvested organs. When did I get an olive seed? Right, let's duck. This station is but a shadow of its former purpose. I do not like it here. Okay, trade authority. Where was the trade authority? There it is. Good to see you. How may the Trade Authority assist you? I hope we have what you need. Let's go to Cell. Miscellaneous. And Harvested Organs. Let's also sell... Uh, cutting Board. Don't know how I got that. What happened to the Olive Seed? I should save that, because it's going to help with crafting and um, upgrading. I'll sell this pack. There we go. Back to New Atlantis. Here to shoot the breeze? It's right. always a good day when we get to chat. Did I get a level up? No, I didn't. Let's see. We're, uh... Science. I want to be able to upgrade my spacesuit as well. We're on weapon engineering. I've got to craft 15 weapon mods. Ugh, I should probably start working on that. Am I close to leveling up?
I'm about halfway there. You'll be scanned as you enter the city. Of course the United Colonies is paying close attention. Heaven forbid something escaped their notice. I do find that statue pleasing. I wonder if it matches the original vision of the artist, or if they changed the design as they worked on it. I am thankful these rides are quick. I do not like being in small, enclosed spaces with many people I do not know. Hello. Wow, she is chatty today. Just super chatty, Andrea. All right. I'm so used to going up to mast. Subsection 7. <laughs> okay. Well, let's have a chat with Ve Victus here. Are we at all surprised that the UC has such a massive space dedicated to secrets? Authorized personnel only. Your friend has to stay here. Uh, fine. I will wait here. You go on. Thank you. Newsflash, he's dead. The universe has one less monster in it. I tried bringing him in, but he took his own life. Hmm, I'm not surprised. The man fled every consequence he ever faced. Of course, you don't expect me to just take you at your word, do you? Uh... I found his... I found this, his ID. Excellent. Please, deposit it in the transfer system. Transfer accepted. Would you look at that? Kept it all these years. Some simply couldn't let go of that old world. This is fine work, Captain. I can ensure the remaining team members find their way to the Red Devil's headquarters. Except for one. That one you'll need to collect yourself. His name is Kaiser. You can find him on the Freestar world of Nera, wandering the battlefield there. The area was ground zero for Xeno weapon deployments during the war. So I would arm yourself appropriately. Oh dear. And I think you'll want to check in with Hadrian and Dr. Walker before paying it a visit. Kaiser will likely have security protocols you'll need their help to overcome. Uh, security protocols? Wait, is this Kaiser guy a robot? A military Model A, yes. Specifically customized for the needs of the Xeno Warfare team during the Colony War. A powerful resource, if you can recover him. Why are you helping us with this? I dedicated my life to the United Colonies. Every effort of my being to their protection. I even gave them my heirs. Even if my circumstances have changed. My purpose is not. Thanks for the information. Of course. We're protecting the galaxy, Captain. We'll need every tool at our disposal. 3,000 credits. 
gained a big boost of experience. Report to Hadrian. Mission updated war relics. Okay. Uh, while we're here, we could try this re-reapplication. Talk to jo John Twala. Authorized personnel only. Your friend has to stay here. I'm leaving. Authorized personnel only. Your friend has to stay here. I'm on the way out. Authorized personnel only. God. Your friend has to stay oh, here. Oh, hello. I will watch your back. Well, that guy was a genius. Landon says, also, how are you feeling about the digipick system over Bethesda's previous lockpicking games? Avoid entering that um, building, I would prefer it. Let us just say I am allergic to bureaucracy. I did an entire video on digipicks and uh, talked about the pros and cons. I like the complexity. I like that it's more of a puzzle. It's more of an actual game where you've got to expend thought process to do it, but it's also really tedious and it's a huge time sink. And that, well, I'm not so fond of. Captain, Admiral Logan informed me of your part in halting the attacks. Whole damn city owes you. Now, what do you need? Can you tell me more about this United Colonies System Defense Group? You can just call them SysDef. Everyone else does. They're the division responsible for combating the Crimson Fleet, fighting pirates. It's not a small job keeping the galaxy's mercantile class safe from death and dismemberment, so they're constantly undermanned. They work out of the ship the UC Vigilance, though the support request was a little vague on what your actual duties would be if you decided you want to lend a hand. Bastian Graf wanted me to talk to you. <laughs> okay, didn't see that one coming. No need to say any more. I know what it's about. He's convinced he deserves a promotion, which to him means a transfer, a command post, maybe a new ship and a big office. Do you know him well? What do you think of him? <laughs> uh, oh, I can't stand him. I'm just in this for the credits. He comes off as a little arrogant. I'm sure he's a great guy. Well, we just met and we, he asked me to do him a favor. I mean, that's the truth, and that's what we'll choose. Fair enough. Clearly, patience isn't his strong suit. I thought the constant stream of messages was a bit much, but if he's going to be sending people here... All right, I received some good advice from someone in the Vanguard recently, and I'm going to run with it. I'd like you to deliver this message to Bastion on my behalf, the full authority of Vanguard leadership. He's going to be the first and only recipient of a new commendation. Quite an honor. I hope he appreciates it. <laughs> Please, give him my regards. Oh, I wonder what it is. That's it. I wonder what this new position is. It's probably like janitor or something. Right, uh, well that brings us back to the ship, but we need to meet, what's her name? Hadrian.
Is she waiting for us on Deimos? She is. Um, alright. I mean, we could go to Wolf. Where was Wolf? Oh, well, let's go talk to... Let's talk to her first. Even without life, there is the potential for beauty. I love Mars. I love the gravity. All right. Captain, welcome back. I was afraid you might have gotten reassigned. You've been gone so long. So how's it feel to be a citizen? Well, uh... We could say... I'm not thrilled associating with a group like the United Colonies. You know, I'd almost forgotten I was a citizen. A lot happened in the interim. Let's try that. <laughs> Must have changed up how the ceremony works. I just raised my hand and said, Sure, I'm in. But it is real good to have you here again. We've been going through the Terramorph data and, well, we're gonna need all the help we can get. These logs, they're even more thorough than I remembered. Genetic workups, population statistics, hell, even their food chain. I'd completely forgotten, for example, that there was a creature that actually ate Terramorphs. Oh! <laughs> At this point, the data's given us more options to explore than we have people to work on them. Wow. What the heck kind of monster eats terramorphs? Well, eight. They went extinct a few decades back. A big lumbering thing called an Aceles. Something I'd love to learn more about, if we had the people to look into it. Altair Thais, uh, a member for 54 months and a silver ox, says, Don't know if you've encountered the ECS constant, but I saw on an earlier video that you wanted an antique computer, and you can steal some from that ship. Yeah, the short that you watched where I said that was actually filmed aboard the ECS constant. So um, I know they've got plenty of antique computers there, and I have done all of the quests on the ECS constant, but a few more to go. Wade Speakerman says, Hello, Oxhorn. Today is my daughter Ren's 12th birthday. Will you wish her a happy birthday from the great and powerful Oxhorn? Well, I don't know how great and powerful I am, but happy birthday to Ren. Congratulations on turning 12. That's amazing. Hi. Uh, you've got a... Hello. Yeah. No, no, I get it. Anything? You're interrupting. I'm talking to Ren, lady. I'm talking to... I'm wishing her a happy birthday. Don't need to interrupt. Anyway, thank you, Wade, and congratulations on the 12th birthday, Ren. Well, then you're gonna love this. Your research team's on its way here. <laughs> That'd be something, wouldn't... I'm sorry, are you? You're serious. You found... our research team? That's... incredible. That accelerates... everything. With them back, it'll let us... Wait. Kaiser. Did you find Kaiser? Uh, what's so special about this Kaiser? Well, Kaiser's one of a kind. Special built for the sort of work we did. Dealing with unfriendly beasts in hostile environments. No other robot in the galaxy like him. So did you really manage to track him down? He's my next stop. But I was told I need your help overcoming his security protocols. That... That's right. You would need that. Whoever gave you these leads sure knew their stuff. Oh, how? How exactly did you manage to find them? Well... We could say, actually, they were found by your father, French, uh, Francois Sanon. He was alive in prison by the UC. Um, I had some help, but we need to leave it at that. 
I'm just talented. <laughs> Miracle worker is more like it. Getting Kaiser back, that gives us more than a few new paths forward on dealing with the Terramorphs. But if he's been out there on his own all this time, you're gonna need something. Come on. Right. We've already made a lot of progress getting this place back online. Some of the containment chambers were a bit on the unpleasant side, but the facility staff made short work of that. What did I just find sitting in that weapon rack? Demoralizing modified coachman. Still, with a magazine size of two, that just makes it so frustrating to use. But it's got Berserker, deals does more damage the less armor one has. Staggering, small chance to start stagger enemies. Demoralizing, small chance to demoralize a target. Nice. I know it's here somewhere. Uh -huh. Here, Kaiser schematics. Actuators, weapons, batteries. That old robot's been MIA for a while, so chances are he's gonna need some repairs. He's also got a lock on his voice controls. You can give yourself authorization with the phrase nos belli machinis. Now, where exactly is the old machine? Nos belli machinis. What's that? That's um, that's Latin for uh, uh, we are the war machine, something like that. Anyway, let's see. Uh, wait, are you suggesting I make these repairs myself? Oh, it's really not that daunting. So long as he's on a planet with some modicum of civilization, you should be able to cobble together most of what he might need. He is on a planet like that. Right? <laughs> uh, free star territory. Wandering a battlefield on a world called Nira. A battlefield? On Nira? Oh, sheesh. No wonder no one's found him. That sector of Nira was destination number one for Xeno weapons during the war. Add to that general environmental devastation and the kind of lawlessness that comes with any Free Star world, and that planet's got more than enough ways to make a visit your last. Oh dear. But I think there's a place where you can start your search. Hmm. Yep. One of a kind salvage. Licensed to an Angelo Alonso. Goes by Gel. As good a place to start as any. What else could you tell me about Nira? The colony war saw a lot of hard fighting, but Nira got it the worst. Everything the Freestar Collective and UC could muster, ground troops, Xena weapons, mechs, was hurled into the fray. Both sides hoped something would decisively turn the tide, but it never did. When the war finally ended, swaths of that world were so devastated they were effectively abandoned. So what Kaiser's doing there, of all places, I can only guess at. Hmm. Why is Kaiser so valuable to stopping the Terramorphs? Kaiser lets us do field work with a level of precision that there's really no other way to accomplish. More than a few of the options we're looking into. Detectors to uncover the Terramorph transmission method, or crafting a targeted biological agent. They require highly specific materials to test against. And asking a group of marines to accompany us for that kind of work, well, it usually ended up with ruined samples and wounded teammates. Now we could say, Hadrian, I have to tell you something. Your father, he's alive. He's being kept imprisoned by the UC. <laughs> or we could say, all right, I'm off to Nira. Look, uh... 
this is really awful. Because on, on a personal level, she has a right to know that her father's alive. But it's weird because he's not really her father. She's a test tube baby. She's a clone. They didn't interact with each other while he was quote unquote alive. It's not like they developed a familial bond. I They're just you there? genetically related. Um, so his father in name only to her and uh, his existence really is a matter of well national security. If it got out that he's still alive it could engineer another war. And I want to prevent that, right? I don't, do I think it was smart for them to keep him alive after all of this time? Probably not. Uh, did he deserve to be executed for what he did? Probably not. I mean, he did what he did uh, because it was wartime, and it doesn't sound to me like he really did anything all that Something bad. Something wrong? His two crimes, the two crimes he was charged with, which uh, were supposed to explain his execution, was that he fired upon civilian ships and that he destroyed the spaceport at uh, Londinian. But he only fired on civilian ships because the Freestar Collective armed a bunch of civilian ships, brought them out into space battle, and actively fired against the UC Navy. What was he supposed to do? Just sit there? So of course he fires back. I can't blame him for that. And then Londinian was being overrun by terror morphs. He needed to make sure that no one could get in or out again. So bombing the spaceport, it's its a severe solution, but it is a solution. I don't know of any other alternative. So everything he did, it wasn't like he was corrupt and he was doing awful things. Hi. Hello. Anything? For some sort of, uh, you know, weird experiment or, or whatever. He did what he had to do under the stress of warfare. So I don't know if he should have been executed for that. Uh, and yet to keep him alive makes this entire peace treaty fragile. So, we gotta keep it secret for now. Maybe we'll have another opportunity later, once things settle down a bit. Alright, I'm off to Nira. And I'll make sure we're ready to put him to use as soon as you've got him. Search for Kaiser on Nira. Right. It is good to be back in our own ship. If you are free soon, could we talk? Hey, we got some uh, updated affinity with Andrea. Just here for a chat? Not with you. Mm -hmm. Yes? I have been curious. I know that your role in Constellation was thrust upon you in an unusual way. But that experience does not demand that you stay. You could have delivered the artifact and then left. Why do you stay? Let's talk about this some other time. There isn't much else going on this week. <laughs> I love a good mystery. It's a good group of people and they need me. The artifacts mean something. It's important we find out what. I like these top two options, but let's focus on the people. They are dedicated in their cause. This is rare and admirable, I think. My past is complicated. And anyone in Constellation will tell you I do not speak much of it. But my family always stressed the importance of having a purpose in life. You must have a reason for being. Why is Constellation meaningful to you? This group of people, who by rights would never associate with one another, has come together for a common cause. That is impressive on its own, before considering the magnitude of the work they have undertaken. The possibilities it holds. I think having goals is important. You've got to have a reason to get out of bed in the morning. Or hopefully you leave a little time for fun, too. We can try fun, too. Fun hey. is not a consideration. Lynn! I am not saying I am incapable of it. It just... 
should never be a priority over other things. When I first came to New Atlantis, I was shocked at how many people go about their business every day like drones. They do their jobs, eat their food, sleep in their beds, all seemingly without concern for anything around them. Complacent. Their experience is so different from much of the settled systems. They do not know how good they have it. How are things different for them? There is no struggle to survive here. No great risk in daily life. I'm sure you have seen for yourself that is not the case for much of the settled systems. Hostile environments, dangerous creatures, not to mention the threats posed by other humans. None of that touches these people. You think people need to struggle to live. There's no way to know what someone else is going through, though. Your experiences must have been very different then. Let's try that. Yes, they were. I did not grow up amidst such luxury. Purpose cuts through adversity. I know that all too well. And these people seem to have no idea. Hmm. Feeling sorry for yourself never helped anyone. I'm sorry life has been hard for you, or you've obviously been through a lot. Let's try I'm sorry. I am not asking for pity. I have done what is necessary to bear my burdens, and it has led me here. My family is unique within the settled systems. I grew up outside the bounds of the United Colonies, or the Free Star Collective. My parents, and their parents before them, did not believe anyone outside our family could be trusted or relied upon. Let you can imagine, I am sure, <laughs> how existence without ties to others is challenging in space. Why did your family insist on independence? They believed, and still do, that Anyone who was not part of our family did not share our values, our goals, and was ultimately a potential threat. My time in the settled systems has mostly led me to agree with them. Hmm. That sounds like a terrible way to live. It's not a life I'd choose for myself. Getting on by your own is admirable. Lynn, this, this conversation does not concern you. She just has to be a part of it. Let's try, it's not a life I'd choose for myself. Well, actually, I don't know. Getting on by your own is admirable. Yeah, but not if it leads to distrusting other people, all other people. And let's try getting on by your own is admirable. It has certainly proven valuable. Saved me a few times without question. For now, though, it would seem you and I have found purpose in Constellation. I believe that is enough. I am pleased that we have common cause and have enjoyed our time together. Thank you. Okay. Well, that was a conversation. Glad to see you're back in one piece. Well, I'm out of rounds for the explosive Grindle. I got plenty of ammo for the Kraken. And I got a lot of caseless shotgun shells for the Coachman as well. But I don't need all those weapons in my inventory at the moment, so... Let's get to it. A 
Looks like we's go we're going to Narian. got through that three starborn ships but we did it okay one of a kind salvage A hard save here not sure what to expect and out we go so this is gonna let be us huge. see what wonders it is impossible to imagine what this looked like before the colony war what a waste huge battlefield wow oh wow we've got ruined mechs natural structure structure natural Natural. One of a kind salvage. So there's a lot to explore down there. I wonder if it's suitable for, um, I wonder if I would find a lot of material for a lore video down there. Interesting. But we've got a mission right now. So let's stay focused. Oh, this is all set to own. What? Customer, supplier, Merc, regardless, you want gel. I want gel, okay.
set to owned. I can't steal it. Or I could steal it, but I don't want to. Okay, we got what? Big ruined mech here? Hey! New model on the floor. Welcome to the one of a kind. Refuge and rest home for the hardest scrappers anywhere. Name's Jill. Proprietor. And what exactly do you and your scrappers do here, Jell? Turn mechs into money mostly. Plus selling equipment, information, and supplies to any short-term scrappers that want to take a shot at striking it rich out in the fields. Well, we could try to pass small, uh, small talk, but say, uh, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Oxhorn. So formal. The pleasure is all mine, my good man. <laughs> Angelo <laughs> Alonzo, at your service. Dramatic. You can call me Jill. Can I get you started on a tab, then? Or are you here to try and make your fortune in the fields? I'm happy to take your credits however you want to hike them over. What kind of name is one of a kind for a salvage yard? It's kind of an inside joke. Other than the fact that we're the only place out here, the mechs we harvest... They're primarily from a group known as the First Cavalry. Their unit was deployed to break the deadlock on this world during the Colony War. Almost succeeded, too. But as you can probably guess, it didn't ultimately work. Left us plenty of scrap to build with, though. So we thought it'd be funny to dedicate this place to the folks that made it possible. Well, anything else you know about this First Cavalry unit? So, they were pretty widely considered the best damn mech unit in the Freestar Militia. Maybe the galaxy. Their leader? Major Paxton Hull. They say he was some kind of tactical genius. Whole damn war, he always seemed to be just one step ahead of the UC. But all that changed here on Nera. The fighting was brutal, apparently. Between the aliens and the UC defenses, most of the first cavals were wiped out. They say Hull snapped, that he couldn't handle the loss of so many good soldiers. When the ceasefire order finally came, he ignored it. Said he was too close to victory, and didn't want his people's lives to be sacrificed for nothing. Whoa! So they caught Marshal Hull and the other survivors of the first, locked them all up, and that was that. I mean, ignoring a ceasefire, that's pretty awful in the middle of combat. Well, we could see what he has for sale. We could continue with the quest, but let's see what happens if we say, I'm here to make my fortune. Lots of money to be made on mech scrap if you know where to look. And I just happen to sell a guide that'll show you the best spots to get started. <laughs> of course Couple of words does. of warning, though. Uh -huh. As you may have put together, Nera's more dangerous than a cellophane airlock. And it's not just the environment that'll kill you. You see brought Xeno weapons here during the Colony War, and more than a few decided to put down roots. Sirens are the ones you really need to watch out for. You've also got the unauthorized scrappers. Ecliptic being the worst of the bunch. Kill you for looking at them wrong. Luckily, we sell a wide array of problem solvers in various colors and calibers. Any near a scrapping expedition starts by checking my stock. What's Ecliptic? We already know, but let's see what he says. Ecliptic are the meanest damn soldiers of fortune in the galaxy. Make the Crimson Fleet seem polite by comparison. You stumble across any out there, you back away slowly, or get ready to kill every last one of them. Hmm. <clears throat> Can you tell me about these sirens? Nasty kind of alien left behind after the colony war. Pretty much blind. Original ones brought to Nera were all Xeno weapons. But those critters have long since passed. But they left behind more than enough untrained babies to keep the fields plenty interesting. Oh. Chad is saying that I should buy all the ammo. Let's try that. Show me what you got for sale. All legal. I swear. Miscellaneous, digipics, and microcells. I think I've got plenty of digipics. 
Resources. Lots of good stuff. Notes. Moby Dick. Scrapping Nira. Oh, let's try that. Aid. Alien liquor. And that's it. He doesn't have any weapons or ammunition. I'm looking for a robot. Goes by Kaiser. Kaiser? No bot around here with that tag. Oh, unless you mean Captain Ahab? Ah. At least that's what we've all been calling him. No clue what his actual designation is, since he's got some sort of security protocol that prevents inquiries and general chit-chat. But he's a combat bot, right? Yeah, that machine's been out there a while now, hunting this one siren. His white whale. His white whale. Yeah, that's why it's Captain Ahab. But it's Ahab. been a while since anyone's laid eyes on Captain Ahab, though. Maybe he finally got the thing. Or it got him. <laughs> All right. Uh, white wh uh, We already know the Moby Dick reference. All right, let's see what he says. White whale? What are you talking about? Moby Dick? Old art story about one Captain Ahab chasing some big fish that's bound to get him killed? No? We all thought the name was a good fit since our bot friend was so damn busy chasing that siren of his. Quality slate, too. Think I got a copy for sale if you want to give it a look. We've read it, thanks. We can again ask, what's a siren? Nasty kind of alien left behind after the colony. Original ones brought to Nira, but they left behind more. And it's the exact same dialogue. We can say, I must have misspoken. Not Ahab, Kaiser. Or we could say, that could be him. The robot I'm looking for worked with the United Colonies Xeno Warfare team. Or we could say, yes, that's Kaiser. Well, all right. So, sounds like you've got two options. You can wander around out there, hunting your bot. Little old white whale of your very own. Maybe you find him. Maybe you get yourself killed. But knowing this rock is part of what we do here, so if you want to find him a whole lot faster, I'll sell you what I know about this. Kaiser's location. Going rate's a little steep, but I'm willing to negotiate. Hmm. Well, uh, we could search for Kaiser in the mech fields or optionally gather information. We could say, I'm gonna take my chances out in the fields. We could say that robot might be the key to stopping terramorph attacks across the galaxy. Let's try that, see if that's enough. I mean, great for him, but that won't keep acetylene in our tanks. And honestly, would you be able to tell if a terramorph was attacking outside? Sorry. We could pay a thousand credits, not that bad, or we can pass a persuade check. I'm sure we can work something out. I'm listening. All right, we need to pass six. Yikes. So we'll try the four. You don't seem to understand. I need this information now. I do understand. I'm trying to figure out a way to help you, okay? Leaves us with two left. I'm not leaving until you tell me what I want to know. We'll see who gets tired of this first. Mm -hmm. Or we can try to pass a one to say I'm sure we can work something out. Yeah, I hope so. And that leaves us with one left, but we got to pass a two. Crap. Uh, I can't afford that. Too bad. You know what? I like you. Maybe we can work something out. Okay, okay, okay. You made your point. I'll give you a discount. And okay, 675 credits here, fine. Just tell me where he is. Pleasure doing business with you. So, last anyone heard of him, he was out near the Syracuse, shipwreck about a quarter click down the main strip. One of my roughnecks said he heard some kind of beacon. Just keep your ears open. You should find your machine. Eyes open too. Sirens and ecliptic out there, and neither takes prisoners. Mm. Oh, and corpse retrieval is not included in this transaction, so now you know. Give Ahab a Kaiser our best. Will do. Okay, now we've got the location. Let's say we got a couple of documents from this. 
Schematic catalog A147XW. Table of contents, introduction, warnings, recommended equipment, power systems, mechanics, battery, microcell, electrical hub, torso, arm, combat systems. The table of contents alone continues on for several more pages describing the creation and maintenance of every piece of the machine's inner workings. Then we've got scrapping Nira. Welcome to Nira, Prospector. You're about to begin the exploration of one of the most dangerous but profitable ventures of your life. Due to the incre incredible toxicity of the environment, Nero's mech fields may remain the most intact in the galaxy, which means they're ripe for the picking. The primary scrapping sites are as follows. Angel Redoubt, the Syracuse, Parduke Pass, and Warren's Gulch. Now get out there and get scrapping. Awesome! That updated well, our map. for fresh terror brew right now? Freeze-dried stuff jail brings in ain't the same. But, since we passed the persuasion check, we now know which of those we need to focus on. Oh, great. And it's night. Of course it's night. Well, that's gonna take us to the Syracuse. Oh, are those big old beasties? Those look like big old beasties. Heat leech, you can do it. Come on, heat leech, you can get out of there. Don't die. Wow, wow, modern technology. <laughs> Outsmarted by a heat leech. Come on, my man, you got this. Escape to freedom, or just get stuck in this never ending loop. Well, we'll let him live out the remainder of his life. Any way he sees fit. Good luck, Heat Leech. Siren. I believe we are not alone. Seems we are clear. Come then, meet your death. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't even reload. That's right, just stand there. Fine, I'll take it. I 
hope wherever you store that the smell will not be an issue. Ah. Oh. Uh, that was the legendary uh, proc on the gun that I've got, right? Tes Tesla. Rounds will sometimes emit electricity when they land that damages and slows nearby targets. Awesome. Never knows what might be found in salvage yards. Good stuff. Thomas McCormick says the female UC commander who helped the Rangers on that one side quest you did made her claim to fame at this battlefield at. Purdue Pass. Oh, okay. Thank you for the lore tidbit there, Thomas. UC Syracuse. So much time and effort into building these ships, and so quickly they come apart in the end. Another siren. Follow the beacon. It's inside the ship. How do we get in there? We need to find an airlock or something. Well, now we know why they're called sirens. Wade Speakerman says that uh, I missed his previous super chat. Sorry about that, Wade. Let me scroll up. Uh, yeah, he says, hello, Ox. Today is... No, that's the previous... The previous one was about your daughter's birthday, and I did see that. The next one that I see from you is you telling me that I missed your previous super chat. So I don't think I did, uh, but thank you anyway, Wade. Yeah, I don't see one between your daughter's birthday and this last one. Ecliptic Mercs. Right, well, this is the Syracuse, and we gotta find a, an access hatch or something. We've gone all around the ship. Maybe it's on top? Of course, it's on top. God. Yes. Well, 
Well, this has certainly seen better days. So it's covered in something. What are those? Heat leeches? this guy's voice <clears throat> we could say one two three four five or ba weep grong weep nini bong <laughs> let's go through them all let's start with that one incorrect password required one two three four five incorrect password required nos belly machinis voice Controls unlocked. Attempting to resume. Attempting to error. Our level insufficient. Battery required. Type microcell. Inquire at salvage yard. Okay, find a micro cell. Do I have any? Surely I, I must have some. Oh, there was another opening over here. Ah. Oh, and there too. Lots of openings. Okay, let's go get a micro cell. Okay, and we're back at the salvage yard. Let's see if he has any on his inventory. Move it. Ah. Okay, where are you going? Hey! Hey, I need to talk! Hey! What can I do for you? I was told you might have a microcell. Ah, so that's where your machine's been. Ran out of juice. Heat leeches, wasn't it? Those little stowaways are everywhere on this rock. Suck the power out of a Pen light if you let them. But a micro cell. That's military grade tech. I think we might have one, but 
I can promise you, it's not going to be cheap. You could well, probably right. Frankenstein one together using our fabrication system here, but only if you had some quality schematics. So, I just brace for a little sticker shock. Optional talk to Gel about making microcells. You said you've got the tools to make microcells here? Wouldn't have lasted real long here, doing what we do without a top-notch fabrication system. So long as you've got the specs, it should be able to handle making you a microcell. But finding materials up to the task, you're likely going to be sifting through quite a few mech hulks out there to find what you need. Oh dear. Though, if you think you can actually manage something like that, I'm willing to make you a deal. I'll point you towards the juiciest harvest sites. Okay, I'm always Spots eager. where you should be able to find quality parts. But in return, any excess materials you collect, you sell to me, all right? Save us from risking our necks on another run out there. What do you say? <clears throat> Will I actually be able to find what I need to build a microcell out there? I can't give you a guarantee, but a couple of mech types use microcells to power non-critical systems. Running lights, radar, that sort of stuff. All the intact microcells will be long gone, too valuable. But the parts to make one, much better chance those are still lying around. So what do you say? Sell me what you don't need, and I'll tell you where to look. Got yourself a deal. Then let me just mark those collection points. Watch yourself out there. Okay. <clears throat> I need a power source, a microcell shielding, and a conductor array. Right. Let's go. You hear screaming out there? You run the other way. It's either the sirens or someone they've got. It is good that something of value can come from those old mechs. Demeter Riley Duncan. Careful in the field, short-termer. Plenty of bodies out there that didn't come with the war. Well. This place used to be a repair facility for Vex back during the war. Now we butcher it for life and profit. Okay. One down. What is it that is said about one man's junk? There is so much junk. It is difficult to recall how that goes. Right, now we just need one more of the microcell shielding. Wait, there was another one over here, wasn't there? Huh. Well, I guess I need to go that way now. Ooh, trick shot. A rare pistol. Wow, okay, uh, skip shot. Every fourth shot fires two projectiles at once. Interesting weapon. Let's play with it for a bit. Cool.
Do all of these have scrap on them? Doesn't look like it. Looks like many have already been looted. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, I found everything I needed. I got the shielding, the power source, and the conductor array. That's why they they popped off of my quest log. Now I need to fabricate one or purchase one. Okay, let's fabricate one. Okay, micro cell. Value 12,000. Wow. Something for personal use or for sale? There we go. Don't forget, get you something. What's a heat leech? But we already know this, but we'll ask anyway. I'm sure you've seen them. They're everywhere. Little worms that nest on electronics or sneak into ship engines and suck the juice from them. Big ports like New Atlantis usually have someone whose job it is to pull them out of dock ships. But since it's just us here, the little bastards have pretty much free reign outside the salvage yard. Uh, well, I don't think we have to sell them any anything to complete this quest. So, quick bio break, everybody. I'll be right back. Hang tight, two minutes. All right, back. Thank you, everybody.
Oop, no. Hey, we can fast travel there, nice. Okay, robot, I got something for you. Battery accepted. Operational power levels restored. Analyzing. Residual damage detected. Impact shielding. Visual systems. Damage within acceptable limits. Thank you for your aid. I must resume my mission. Please step aside. <clears throat> what were those creatures? You had to be removed. I mean, we already know what heat leeches are now, but we'll ask. <sighs> heat leeches. Energy siphoning pests. Nested as I reset from my last altercation. Good to have them gone at long last. <laughs> Interesting. This guy seems to have a bit more personality than Vasco. He had a frustrated grunt there. Mission, what are you talking about? Weapon disarmament. High risk. So I will ask you to stand aside. Your mission just got suspended. Or superseded. Major Hadrian Sanon wants you back. Major Sanon. We'll have to wait. I cannot leave my mission. Although, previous attempts to disarm the weapon have been unsuccessful. Additional support may allow me to complete my active mission more quickly, allowing me to leave this place. Let me think about it, or Kaiser, the galaxy is at risk here. That takes precedent over whatever your current mission is. Or tell me about the mission first. Or if you're asking me to help you with your mission, sure, I can do that. Let's try convincing him that this mission takes precedence. Request denied. My current mission requires completion. Will you provide support? Tell me about the mission first. My mission is the disarmament of Unit XW-99. Designation, Siren. Nearest final active Xeno weapon. 99 has proven a far more formidable adversary than its peers. Will you aid me with disarmament? 99, huh? <laughs> but aren't there lots of these siren things running around? Why is killing this one so important? During the colony war, handling of Unit 99 and its peers were among my personal duties. Deploy Unit 99. Defend Unit 99 against hostile forces. But above all, ensure Unit 99 was never used against non-combatants. When I was separated from the Xeno Warfare team with the Armistice, Unit 99 and its broodmates remained here, causing many non-combatant deaths. So I am here to correct my mistake. I have nearly succeeded in disarming their brood. Only Unit 99 remains. So this robot feels personally responsible for all of those civilian deaths. This robot is expressing guilt. That's fascinating. We're going to disarm a Xeno weapon, so I'll be helping you what? Kill some alien? Correct. Unit 99 is a siren. A deadly biological specimen deployed to Nera during the colony war. Engineered for combat efficiency. Execution of said specimens is the standard method of Xeno weapon disarmament. What can you tell me about Unit 99? 
Species designation, Secusa Lantanus. Top speed, 78 kilometers per hour. Confirmed kills, 107. <laughs> he says that with such disgust in his voice. Killing is the standard disarmament method, meaning there are other mes methods aside from killing? Technically, yes. All Xeno weapons have a control interface, which allows them to be given orders. If Unit 99 were to be subdued, I could wipe its interface. This would prevent Unit 99 from ever being used as a weapon again. That would be technically sufficient for the parameters of my mission. However, it is my personal assessment that Nero would be better off with Unit 99 terminated. He has a personal assessment. Interesting. Um, fine, I'll join you, but I don't want to kill this thing if we don't have to. I mean, why do we even have this option? It's a monster. It's killed 107 people. It needs to be destroyed. If that's the only way I can get you to come with me, fine. Let's go, or let's move out. Follow me. Here we go. Mind your step. As you have no doubt witnessed, this region can be hazardous to organics. Attention! Possible threat in area. Pew pew! Is that for selling later or personal use? This thing goes pew pew! Probably best not to think too long about what Ecliptic will be doing with anything they salvage. Tony J goes, now it goes, pshoom, pshoom. You're right, I stand corrected. It's not a pew pew, it's a pshoom. He says that. Do you concur? How can this ecliptic group use Unit 99 as a weapon? If these mercenaries were able to decipher a method to access Unit 99's control interface, it would allow them to deploy the weapon. This must be prevented at all costs. We could say you wait here, I'll check it out myself, or I want to tr uh, try and disarm Unit 99 without killing it. Why would we want that? Like, can we get it as a companion or something if we do that? Um, frontal assault sounds good to me. Let's go clean house. Simple and straightforward. A good choice. She likes that. Moving out.
Aren't you prepared to die? Here's Unit 99. Oh, he clipped to the floor! Oh, he's invisible! What? What? What is going on? Modified Bridger, and we got an Old Earth Rifle. Specimen Cage Keycard. Wow, we got a legendary Old Earth Rifle. Cornered, damage increases as health decreases. Corrosive, randomly deals corrosive damage and reduces the target's armor over six seconds. Elemental, randomly deals corrosive, radiation, poison, and incendiary damage. Oh my god. That's amazing. Randomly deals status effects. Randomly deals more corrosion damage. And it's got the cornered legendary effect. That's brilliant. Modified Bridger, what is that? Oh, it's like a thump thump. Heavy. That's cool. I'm gonna try this out. Right, well, there's the key card. Unit 99 service is now complete. Mine, however, continues. Our work here is finished. Now, what is this mission you spoke of? Major Sanon is involved. We've wasted enough time as it is. Trust me, you'll love it. We've reunited part of the Xeno weapons team, but we're fighting against aliens, not with them. Hadrian and I want your help preventing a possible plague of Terramorph attacks. A plague of Terramorph attacks. That is disconcerting. You are docked at one of a kind. I will meet you there. And there he goes. Goodbye, robot. You are intriguing. What an intimidating robotic voice. I love it. And he seems to have developed wants, desires, guilt, emotions. That's disturbing, but cool. And what about the benefit of keeping mech components? Ooh. I wonder what the benefit of keeping the creature, Agent 99, alive would have been. Heart plus. Ah! Uh. Oh! Hey! Bolstering bar room pack. All right, all right. Sweet. Right out of the gate. Boom. 
Oh, nice. Great. So, but no, no, wait, that one won't work. So we'd have to go that one or that one. Um, but that gives us overlap. So... That's the only option. Okay. Okay, there we go. That no, that won't that won't do that either. So we have to use one or the other. We can't use both. This goes for the middle. That's nice. We can put that there, leaving two left. Top or bottom? Top only. Another one. Okay, so with that, we've got that covered. But now we've got overlap there. Okay, well, what if we... There we go. Nope, that won't do it. Crap. Oh, well, that's the only spot for it. And this one is slightly off. <laughs> we can't use it there. We can only use it there. But... Means we could use that there. But they overlap. Annoying! Ah, here we go. Bingo. Okay, so then we've got this one, which can go there, uh, but oh, those are out of the picture now. So if we put that and use that, oh, those overlap. So we could put that there, but now we've got an overlap there. Uh, that's the only way that uh, place for that one to to work and this one can only work here so these two conflict and that's the only spot for that so if that goes there and that goes there. We've got the bottom sorted, which means we need to use the rest of these to solve the top. Which we could do. But we have to use these three. We gotta use that there, which leaves those three open. There we go. I hope you can. Succeed at that before we are discovered. At least this one's going to be easier. Okay, uh, top only. All right, that's where that fits. Top and bottom, top only. But again, no, we could put that there, or we could nope that. So that's where that fits. Which means we've got some overlap, unless we put this here. No, but it won't fit there. Alright, so we've got two with overlap here. Gotta choose between the two, and then another one for the top. Alright. Well, let's try... That works. That works. Overlap. Over... Uh, no... Overlap. That's bottom only. Let's see if we can sort bottom only so we know which ones we can use. Alright, if we put that there for the bottom, then we'll need those two for the top. One, two, three, four.
Great. So those two for the bottom. Which means we need to solve this one with these. I'm just going to auto slot this one. But wait a minute, didn't we need that one? We needed that one for the top. But why would it tell me to auto slot that if we needed it for the top? Oh, we didn't. Okay, we need that one for the top. All right. So then we just need, um, there. Furious Assassin's Urban Eagle. Ooh. Is that a terminal? UC Specialist Slate. The model, as we have in the armory, are first class and will respond to any threat on the station. I don't have uh, clearance to know what goes on here, but I know well enough that any security breach needs to be eliminated. Given the stakes, I've made it my personal project to bolster their weapon systems, and studying their call stacks, I feel like I can make some improvements in their programming subroutines too. But when I told the lieutenant, she responded with that grim stare of hers. She reminded me that I need to get approval through the proper channels before modding the machines on my own. Right, I heard a terminal open when I was over here. See if we can trigger it again. Right there. Did I miss a terminal? I did, right there. Local systems. Active contracts. Xeno weapon collection. Buyer has requested tracking and collection of Siren Alien from Nira. States they want to be able to show it off at parties. Have it do tricks. Getting a trainer who would probably be cheaper. Uh, getting a trainer would probably be cheaper, but if a fool wants to be parted from their money, who are we to stop them? Material recovery. If we're going to be setting up on Nira anyway, my, uh, may as well harvest whatever materials you can from the fields. If things don't pan out with the alien, let's make sure this isn't a total loss. Targets of opportunity. Large caliber weapon, ordnance, high caliber ammunition, battery pack, targeting systems. So Ecliptic was here to, to steal the weapon, the Xeno weapon, so it can be used as a party trick. Wow. Robot collection. A couple of our folks ran across an old but autonomous functioning combat model A. Collection was attempted, but we all came back, uh, but all we came back with was five wounded, two of which had to be off-worlded. If the opportunity presents itself though, the thing would a could absolutely fetch a pretty penny. That's probably our robot companion friend that we have here. Spe specimen cage management. Warning, specimen cannot be returned to cage once released. Specimen release. release. Alright, so we could have snuck in here, accessed this terminal, and released him. And he would have devastated the mercenaries here. Okay. Xeno warfare tech. Ooh. We've definitely got to make a trip to the wolf system. Okay. Kodama? What's a Kodama? Have we found that yet? No, this is new. 
interesting, not particularly, um, not better than what we, it still uses the 7.77 ammunition, so. Right, well, we're encumbered, let's find our companion, where are you? Where is she? There she is. You have my attention. If there's anything you need, I am happy to share. Deuteronomy says that I got a Kodama several episodes ago. Did I really? She's carrying all of this? Oh, I forgot to get this from her inventory. She's been carrying all my crap and I forgot about it. Uh, <laughs> I need to hit a couple of merchants here. All right, well, let's have her store more of my stuff. I'm uh, several dozen pounds over... In, okay, so we got... I mean, I love that. I love that, too. Six pounds over. Let's give her... The Varun pack. There we go. Now we can fast travel. That is all? Right, we're going to the wolf system. Right, let's get rid of this contraband. I'm gonna become fast friends with the trade authority here. May I be of sir? If there's anything I can do, by all means. Didn't we also loot pe uh, mech parts? What happened to the mech parts? Ooh, how are they hidden? Uh, do they not accept mech parts? Oh, I'm in buy. Oh my god, I'm in buy. I just bought them. Wow. Wow. I'm a genius. Cyberware, streetwear, don't need that. I want to keep that because it's the only legendary one I have. Let's uh, talk to Andrea yes, here. Yes, you need me. And what have you got for me? Stuff that she's got. 
Uh, I've got two of these which I could sell. It's going to give me a lot of money. That might actually deplete. There's my lawgiver. I could use that as my sniper rifle um, is currently out of ammunition. I've got a legendary one of these, I think, so I can sell that one. Can sell that one. I think that might be my only purple one. Hold on. Is that it then? Let's sell what we have. Was there something you needed? Yes, of course. He only gives me 2000 for it, though. All right, I've got another one of these, so I don't need it. Okay, he's still got a few thousand left. Yes. A good team always shares the load. I know I have one of these back at the base, but I think this is my only rare one, so I'll keep that, keeping that, keeping that. I guess I'll leave her with one spacesuit. <laughs> uh, I've got a better Grendel. Oh, I did have a Kodama. There it is on her inventory. I'll keep that. I don't remember if I had a legendary urban eagle or not. I'll leave her with that trucker pack. Take that. But I'll leave her with only one. She only needs one. This sells for more. Well, hold on. Modified. Okay, let's sell that one. Sell that. Sell that. Sell that. I've got one of... That's my suppressed Razorback, though. I think I need to keep that. And then Trick Shot. This is the only Trick Shot I have, so I'll keep that. All right, I think I'll keep all of this. I'm not exactly sure, but... Uh, Very good. Yeah, let's see how much of this we can sell. How may the Trade Authority assist you? Certainly. Did I have another Bridger? I think that's the only Bridger that I have. Or is the Bridger just an Ashta Tamer? It is. Okay, so the Ashta Tamer is a Bridger. So I can sell this one. All right, I think we got through everything we needed to. <coughs> All right, let's go. Will we be taking off immediately or are there other matters that... Fix your ship box, says Deuteronomus. Yeah, I did get in that space fine. I, can I... Do they have a ship services there at the den? They probably do. Let's redock and... Um, try to use ship services to repair the ship. It's only going to be a thousand... I have something for you when you've got a sec. Anything I can help you with? Need some work done? Ship needs repairs. You were able to land it, so I'm sure whatever is broken can be fixed. There I go. 
Chad is saying to buy ammo. Thank you for the reminder. Something I always forget. If there's any- Was there something you need? I hope we have what you need. I should probably buy it all, huh? Ooh, that's a big drop in change. But, I need it. But I should probably buy at Atlantis, right? I'm gonna get a 10% discount at Atlantis. Let's take a look at my uh, inventory here. What weapons are out of ammo? I need the 40mm XPL. I need 7.62. 7.77. I've got... Oh, the micro gun uses that as well. Okay. May I be of service? You won't find a better offer on the station. And then, yeah, chat's right, I did have that quest. I needed to talk to this guy. I am, hands down, the best pilot in this dump. Don't let anyone tell you different. You look like you've got news. It better be good news. Chininator oh, says- hey, Come on, don't keep me in suspense. When do I ship out? Hey, Oxhorn and friends. Sorry I didn't say something sooner. I've been working, so I'm just lurking. No worries, Chininator, good to have you here. Uh, you're not shipping out anywhere, we could say. Oh, the news is even better than that. Or, you might want to sit down first. <laughs> Let's try and amp him up. Let's see if we can get him paused. Oh, the news is even better than that. What? How could it be better? Oh, come on. Quit messing with me and just tell me already. We could say you're getting a commendation, but I think it's just to shut you up or read for yourself. I don't want to spoil it. Or congratulations, you're being awarded a special commendation. Let's say that. Wow, really? Let's see. Uh, unique in the history of the Vanguard. That's good, right? Okay. Okay, finally some real recognition. Thanks for doing the legwork here. I'm not going to forget that you helped me out. And someday, when I'm running the Vanguard, I'm gonna make sure you get paid big time. For now, though, my account's a little light, so this is the best I can do. But, but really, I mean it. I'm gonna remember this. 2,500 credits. Okay. Someday when he's in charge of the Vanguard. Uh, THD Midas became a Silver Ox. Thank you so much, THD Midas. Now, we leveled up, which means we need to go complete a challenge so that we can further modify our weapons. We've gotten rid of all of our um, banned substances, so... I think we should make a pit stop at the Lodge before going back to Deimos. Our quest is sending us to Deimos, but let's go to Alpha and Centauri really quickly, and we'll go to the Lodge, do some uh, weapon crafting and maintenance here. It's Bondar. There's a ship there. Grissom. No, not the eye. Oh my god! Why, why can't I do this correctly? Alpha Centauri. Jemison, the Lodge. Kademan with a super sticker. Thank you so much, Kademan. Again, who do you think will be the first to ask us questions? Mateo or Noel? 
15 weapon modifications. 15. Well, let's see what we can do here. I could install a standard barrel. Let's do it, because I gotta get through 15. One. Two. Four. Still need Leon a neon for that. Need adhesive. Need muzzle mods for that. Here, I could do a tactical magazine. Five. The stock versions are never quite what you want, are they? Six. Seven. Eight. Ten. Eleven. Hold on a sec. Let's take a look at our... Uh, hold on a second. I think I, I've got a research thing that I unlocked here. I have none of my inventory, so I can't do this. So I'm blocked on increasing these because I don't have the right resources. All right, I'm at 11, 11 of 15. It's going to consume my nickel, though, and I don't want to consume my nickel. It's rare. That's going to consume my titanium. We could do iron sights, but that consumes nickel. I guess we just swap out uh, barrels for the um, shoddy. Now that's gonna consume my nickel to go back to the long barrel as well. What was the one that, uh, I think it was this one. Now that also consumes my nickel. 
Only if I do the long barrel. Uh, 12. 13. 14. Challenge complete. I can now get rank two of weapon, or rank three of weapon engineering. 30, I got it <laughs> before I can do uh, the fourth one. I got to do 30, yikes. Okay, well, uh, now my big stopgap is resources. I need neon. Titanium. Adhesive. I gotta rank up muzzle mods for that one. Binary trigger, but I need receiver mods for that. Okay, well while we're here, let's get, let's manage our inventory. What did you need? I have never been one to shy away from shouldering my share of a heavy load. Lab coat, Ox, oh right, I needed to use my lab coat. Uh, let's see, this is her inventory. Let's take all of these. Until next time. Let's put my lab coat here so I don't forget to use it next time. And let's uh, deal with what we've got in the safe and sell anything extra. Okay. Lawgiver. This has a scope. I believe I have a better lawgiver in here. A lacerate lawgiver, but it does not have a scope. <clears throat> and I can't add one yet. So I'm going to keep the one that I've got because I don't have enough ammunition for the hunting rifle. XM2311. XM2311. This one's suppressed. Is the other one suppressed? I only have 55 rounds of it. It's not suppressed, but it is. I've got a different gun that I can use for suppression, so I'll... I'll um... All right, advanced solstice. Let's see, do I have another solstice? I do. Calibrated solstice. So then I can store the crippling solstice. All right, so I've got the uh, old earth assault rifle. And I believe I have another old earth assault rifle here. Yeah, no, that's the hunting rifle. There it is, Gallows Reach. But it's a unique item, so I don't want to get rid of it. It takes the 7.62 caliber ammunition. And I believe I have another weapon that uses that. I'm going to store it for now. 
I'm going to store the Beowulf and use the um, Lawbringer, just because this one has... I'm, I'm building back up that ammunition. Uh, the Kadama, I'm going to store it because it uses the same ammunition as the Beowulf. Urban Eagle. Do I have an Urban Eagle already? There it is. Yes. I've got a Disassembler's Urban Eagle. Let's see which one I want. Furious Assassin's Urban Eagle. Or Disassembler's Urban Eagle. This has better mods on it. Now this one has some decent mods as well. And this one's got a suppressor. This one does not have a suppressor. So we'll save that. Sell that. Keeping the Maelstrom. All right, Razorback. I don't think we have a legendary Razorback. We do. No, we've got a suppressed Razorback here. So this is an extra Razorback. We can sell that, sell that. I'm keeping this to go through that ammunition so far. It's not... Um, well, I'm going to need one silenced weapon now. We'll store the trick, trick shot. Uh, this is it. I'm going to have to use this. So then let's go back to weapons and I'll store the regulator, even though it does more damage, because I need at least one silenced weapon. All right, so we sell that, sell that, slot that to number one. No. Yeah, slot that to number one, sell that, sell that, slot that to number four. Okay. He's out of ammo. What can I do for you? Like their owners, or he's out of uh, their ships credits. With heat leech nest. Did you Would need something? Nice if I can take a few things, I... So let's give her... Let's give her that for now. We'll sell it later. Mm-hmm. Then let's uh, hotkey everything. It goes to four. Goes to one. Goodbye. Okay. On with the quest. Word, and we shall be on our way. Back to Mars.
colony space. Please maintain course and prepare to be scanned. Scan complete. You're clear to land. Why is my grab drive still damaged? I repaired it. I mean, it's slowly recovering. Hmm. All right. Okay, strange robot voice. I don't see you, but sounds good. Kimosabi says you can't repair those parts of the ship. They auto repair. Oh, I didn't realize that. I mean, I paid for repairs. Do the repairs I pay for only repair the hull? <laughs> I can't believe it. Major Sanon, Dr. Walker. You're in better shape than I expected, Geyser. Shouldn't take as long to get you back up to full fighting capacity. This is good to hear. I was told there was a new threat on the horizon. I wish to learn more. Percival will give you the full story. Plus, get you dressed for the occasion. Occasion? Where are we going? Londinian. Additional armaments. That's the plan. Come on. Captain, you're with me. Time to walk you through what we came up with. Sounds so the good. problem we're up against is vast. Terramorphs, they can be anywhere. Meaning us finding and disposing of them ourselves isn't an option. Hypothermia can set in quickly, and the effects can be deadly. We should keep us. that in mind. Come on. I'll walk you through what we're thinking. <clears throat> you remember that creature we talked about before you went to Nera? The thing that eats terramorphs, the Asilis? I do remember, but we can say, wait, there's a thing that eats terramorphs? Take that as a no, then. Yes, there are. Apparently, the Asilis were bloodhounds for terramorphs. But when the UC ran low on synthetic foods during the Colony War, the Asilis were chosen to fill in the gaps. We thought they were harvested to extinction. But in the data, the research team found the location of a few remaining specimens. As you can see, what Whoa. we're proposing is bringing them back. Holy We'd cow. breed populations of them, distribute them to human worlds, and then let nature take its course using a method wow. that thousands of years of adaptation have already perfected. We could speed up their breeding process using, well, using some of the same technologies that were used to create me. We even think that with some time and investigation, we could use the Asili's hunting skills to track down the Terramorph transmission method at long last. Find out how humanity spread them and put an end to the Terramorph problem Definitively. What a majestic beast. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. They had this creature. Let me get this straight. They had this creature that would eat terramorphs. It was the only natural predator for the terramorphs. But when the UC started to get low on food, they decided instead of growing potatoes, instead of growing rice, instead of harvesting any of the other creatures on all of their planets, they decided to harvest the only natural predator for the terramorphs until it was extinct? Brilliant. Geniuses. How could Asilis really clean up whole worlds like you're describing? All our data suggests so. Asilis, they're impressive hunters. The few tests we've been able to run, well, they more than got the job done. They're also shockingly adaptable. The data suggests they're able to thrive just about anywhere and we plan to selectively breed them so they can hunt terramorphs wherever they're hiding. Which is important, because we did some cross-referencing in the terramorph data. 
On worlds where Asili's were present, Terramorphs weren't. This suggests that however it is Terramorphs are getting onto our worlds, Asili's are somehow cleaning that up as well. These creatures are good at what they do. It's an interesting concept. I, a, a couple of thoughts come to mind. What do these creatures eat when they are out of Terramorphs? So they clean up Terramorphs on planets, but then what do they eat? Plants or humans? How long does it take for them to breed is another issue. Are the Asilius things dangerous? If you pick a fight with one, or you're a Terramorph, sure. But Asilis were already spread across the galaxy once before during the Colony War. As livestock, they're far less of a danger than the one we're proposing to clean up. We could say not sure I like the idea of introducing random aliens to human worlds across the galaxy. We're using aliens to our own ends. Sounds like the Xeno Warfare team all over again. I mean, we're, met, we're cleaning up a problem the Xeno Warfare team started, so... Huh, that sounds like it, it could actually work. It sounds like it could work, but I am concerned about reintroducing aliens across a whole bunch of new worlds. Let's see what she has to say about that. Well, there is another option. It'd be faster, maybe even more effective. But it's got its own risks. A microbe. Something we could oh. aerosolize. Let's spread and have it clean up anything with Terramorph DNA for us, <laughs> which would include morphs, and we expect their transmission method. Oh, dear God. It'd still take time to build, test, and distribute, but no other method could hold a candle to it when it comes to sheer efficiency. Not even the Asilis. Oh, wow. What? What options? Either we, we introduce a species of creature... <clears throat> Onto thousands of, well, not thousands, but dozens of human worlds to eat these terramorphs, or we release microbes into the atmosphere? Uh, I think I know which option I like best. And who exactly is going to be doing all this work, dispersing the microbe or the Asilis? Well, that's still not 100%, but it sounds like the Vanguard will actually be picking up a fair bit of it. But there's no sense in hammering down those sorts of details before we've made a decision on which route we're taking. What kind of risks are there with this microbe? Percival assures me that they're minimal. Minimal? He'll be able to encode safeguards against mutation in the agent's genetics so that they stick to the task of cleaning up terramorphs. But the microscopic world has a tendency to behave in ways you can't always predict. Yeah. So to say there's zero risk would be a lie. Right. Both, I, I don't know if I like either option, but then again, I don't like terramorphs either. So we're really picking one of three bad realities. A reality where terramorphs exist and are killing humans. A reality where an invisible microorganism is in the air killing terramorphs, but possibly mutating and doing other things. Or a reality where we have these Asiris wandering around which eat terramorphs and don't hurt you if you don't hurt them first, but could do something else that we don't know of yet. The thing is, the Asiris are big. You can find them, you can track them, you can, if necessary, exterminate them but once a microbe is released uh, hello that's it like there's no containing microscopic organisms so i'm gonna go with the less risk let's say that sounds like you're playing with fire i vote for the acilians they are quite handsome creatures almost serpentine even she likes that uh always thought they looked a little more avian myself but they put the Terramorphs to shame when it comes to charm. With either path, though, we're looking at a long-term commitment. Years of work. Even just getting these plans off the ground is going to take time. And all routes are going to require some highly specific materials to make things work. Terramorph cell lines we can breed quickly and consistently to test on. Asili's gene samples we can use to rebuild their bloodlines or sharpen our microbes' tracking skills. Not the sort of things any labs just got lying around. But we think we found a lead. One place in the known galaxy where we know we should be able to find all the materials we need. All paths lead to Londinian. Yay, we get to go to Londinian. 
Londinian had an Aselius population? It was the central hub for Aselius processing during the Colony War. But, and this part's exciting, the Terramorph data suggests Aselius were first found there. The planet it's on, Toleman II, was their homeworld. Meaning, there's a very good chance their prey, the Terramorphs, came from that same world. Which would also explain why no one ever suspected that planet as the Terramorph source world. The Aesilis were too damn effective at cleaning them up. Additionally, it explains why once the Aesilis were gone, the outbreak there was so catastrophic. Londinian could very well be where the Terramorph saga began. And the key to its end. Makes sense, but also doesn't explain why the Terramorphs seem to just appear out of nowhere. Are we even allowed on Londinian? Hmm. <laughs> it's certainly not encouraged, but the UC's given their sign-off for this excursion. This trip is all above board. The planet overrun by Terramorphs? Isn't that suicide? It's dangerous, yes. But Kaiser, Percival, and I, we've trained for this. And you're not so green yourself. And the last thing I want right now is for the UC to stick us with some gung-ho jarhead who's going to put us and the mission at risk. Captain, you're the reason we're all here right now. You're the person I think can help us finish it. Will you join us on this? Listen, I need time. Or if this is what it's going to take. Or then let's, let's not waste any more time. Londinian, here we come. Exactly what I was hoping to hear. Now... The UC has a small operating base on Londinian's outskirts. We're cleared for access, but we'll need to check in with the base commander, Sarah Hatoum, when we touch down. I'm gonna help Percival and Kaiser prep, but once that's done, we'll rendezvous with you there. But you need to know, Londinian? It belongs to the Terramorphs. They'll have anti-Xeno gear for us at the base, but I'd make sure you've got your favorite arms on hand. Uh, uh. You have my attention. It's not about my favorite arms, it's about what I've actually got ammo for. Just amazing. Okay, optional, get geared up. Let's see what they've got. I sincerely hope there is adequate security for this facility. Hello. I hope that we have not ultimately made a mistake in resurrecting this place. Damn planet. You romanticize a place when you're away from it for long enough, but I forgot what a dust-crusted pit Mars can be. Now you, uh, what do you need? What's wrong with Mars? Oh, nothing. I love having to take a toothbrush to every crate they drag in here. Now you're gonna tell me what you need or can I get back to my work? <laughs> we could say, well, aren't you just a ray of sunshine? Wanted to introduce myself, Captain Oxhorn, Vanguard. I've been helping Hadrian. Oh, that's you then. I was informed we might be working together. Don't much care for Vanguard. But sounds like you two really got into the thick of it back in New Atlantis. My sister's kids live in the city. So, um, thank you for what you did there. What's your problem with the Vanguard? Don't think it's a controversial belief that the UC should spend its money on its own people first. Rather than doling out credits to pilots from God knows where. But, considering the evidence before me, I guess the program's not a total waste. So, what you did for New Atlantis, I appreciate it. You're welcome. I hope your family was alright. Yeah, they both came through okay. One science division. Others an artist. Effectively useless human beings that would have had no reason to be anywhere near the fighting. Still, 
would hate to see anything happen to it. <laughs> now, Useless what was it you beings. needed? <laughs> Way to describe your own kin. Useless human beings just because they're artists? Damn. What do you think about this new project, taking on the Terramorphs? If anyone can pull off something as downright lunatic as that, it's these people. And I'll make sure they've got all the supplies they might need to make it a reality. I get the sense this isn't the first time you've worked in this place, is that right? That's correct. Ran logistics for the Devils for years before getting the assignment here. Military logistics isn't usually thrilling work, but as bone-crushingly exhausting as this job could be, it sure as hell was never dull. Coordinating habitats for nightmares from the far side of Lantana 8B and their favorite breathing snack foods? Sure, why not? Stocking the UC for a rancher who's got 2,000 great A kilos of biomass he can ship to Mars per week? We call days like that Tuesday. So when I heard things might be opening up again, I put in for my transfer immediately. Let me see what you got for sale. No more reliable hardware in the galaxy. Well, let's see for sure. Amped up, Orion. This is a unique weapon, I believe. One second. Hold on. Okay, where were we? <sighs> Calibrated pacifier, Nova Light breach, reckless bombardment. What is that? Rare heavy. Uses 40 millimeter XPL. <laughs> I only have 17 rounds of that. Zarteth says score one for the murder parrot giraffe armadillos. <laughs> That's exactly what they look like. 84,000. 84,000. Wow. And this guy has 5,000 credits, 6,000 credits to barter with. Looks amazing. Vampire's Gift? Ooh. It's got the med theft. And five different mods on it. But he uses the 7.7 .7 millimeter ammo, which I've only got 500 rounds of. Seventeen thousand, God. Eighty-four thousand, God. Eleven thousand, jeez. I mean, it, it all looks really cool, but I'm not going to spend my money on all this. Instead, I will see what ammo he has. 82 rounds is going to cost me 600. All right. That's a lot. Four rounds is going to cost me a couple hundred. Ultra mag, I'm going to need those. It's just so expensive. Shock armor pack. It's better than what I have stats-wise, but no legendary effects. UC Navy armored fatigues. Ooh, plus five reload speed. Navy duty fatigues. P plus five reload speed. Navy fatigues. Again with the reload speed. And Navy hat. Navy hat. It's like a, a sea cap. A <laughs> seaman's cap. Well, I haven't upgraded my fatigues recently. Let's um, 
compared to what's equipped. I lose 15 EM, but I gain 10 energy and 5 physical. So, it's not any better. Really. I'll save my money for now. Okay, to the ship. Everything seems to be where we left it. Are you gonna stop me from landing? Off limits, why? You're interfering with a critical mission. Stand down or I'll report you. I'm cleared to be here. I'm meeting with Commander Hatoum. Let me check my logs. <laughs> All right, you can proceed. We'll let them know you're on your way down. Okay. Water safe. We've got water, lead, argon, benzine, and silver. Forward base 441. Let's land. Normal user says, Ox, you have 432,000 and you get scared to buy a good gun at the merchant? It's not just the good gun, it's everything about it. First of all, the price of the gun is nearly one-fifth of my entire fortune. Then I'd have to buy ammo for it, and the ammo is expensive, and I didn't really have enough of it. So, at the end of the day, even if I were to buy it and buy all the ammo that the merchant had on his inventory, I'd have less than a hundred rounds to use for a gun that costs nearly a hundred thousand to buy. So, it just didn't seem like it was good for me at the time. Now, perhaps I'll change my mind and it'll be great later. Let's go ahead and save on this planet. Especially since I already have some pretty powerful weapons. I didn't see anything in there that was essential. As cool as it did look. Such beauty. I have heard of Lumbinian. Anyone who has spent time in United Colonies space has, of course. Now I understand why the stories persist. Compound. 
Zarteth says, come planet Tolemon. Give me your sillies. Terramorph come and me wanna drop bomb. <clears throat> I see that's, um, that's uh, lyrics to a song. Okay. Ruins of Londinian. I pride myself on knowing everyone on this world, and I don't know you. You're with the collection team then, I presume. Either that, or you're one deeply unlucky trespasser. Uh, I'm just here for the coffee. Black, two sugars, please. Hmm. Deflection. Lovely. Nervous, then. I certainly wouldn't blame you. Well, perhaps I'll just get my answer from them instead. Commander Hatoum, I'm... No need for introductions, Major Simon. Dr. Walker, your reputations precede you. Can I also presume he's with you? Oh, uh, the captain? Yes, ma'am. Couldn't do this without him. Hmm. Then let's not waste any more time. Now, Londinian is one of the most dangerous places in the Milky Way. It's with good reason my soldiers and I do everything we can to avoid entering the city. Terramorphs are omnipresent, and the structural damage left behind when... when Major Sanon's father bombed its spaceport has turned large swathes of the metropolis into a decaying labyrinth. As such, We'll be providing you all with gear, information, and uploading municipal unlock codes to your robot. Every tool you could need to succeed out there. Except one. Once you're on the other side of those barriers, you will be on your own. If you get into trouble, my people will not be coming. Do we understand each other? Makes sense. We could say they Victus bombed this place? Why would he do that? The initial Terramorph outbreak that overran Londinian during the tail end of the Colony War came as a complete shock. Waves of the creatures appeared out of nowhere, and the city was quickly overwhelmed. There were some attempts at evacuation, but Ve Victus decided more definitive action was merited. He ordered the spaceport be bombed, ensuring no other ships could leave the city. Halting the spread of the outbreak, but leaving large sections in ruins and condemning countless lives. And the intervening 20 years have only made Londinian more hostile, not less. So my people will not be coming for you out there. Understood? You wouldn't even send a rescue party? We are unwanted guests on this planet and, as a rule, I don't put my people in any more risk than is absolutely necessary. We've got it hard enough out here. So, no, there will be no cavalry sweeping into the rescue. Can you tell us what we are going to face out there? Terramorphs, and plenty of them. Outside our little sanctuary here, much of the planet is theirs. For that reason, we keep our trips into the city to a minimum. That also means our intel becomes largely historical once you go much beyond the defenses. It's also why I want to make sure I'm being crystal clear. Out there, you're on your own. Being very crystal clear, we could say, sure, sure, now I'll take your heavy or heaviest ordinance, please. Or, understood, ma'am, don't expect backup. Precisely. I'll leave you to your preparations, then. You can find your equipment in our armory, base of the tower just outside. And I do believe there's someone waiting for you there, Captain. Oh? Now, once you're outside the base, it's my personal suggestion you make a beeline to the nearby Asili's plant. It contains one of our field caches. Though, I can't guarantee it won't contain anything else. I hope you all find what you're looking for out there. Robot, you're coming with me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Commander. Percival, you all set to hook into their comms tower? Should only take a few minutes. Let's get this done and get the hell out of here. Percival will be scanning the city for our samples from here. When he finds one, he'll transmit the coordinates to us out in the field. You can pinpoint the location of these samples all the way from here. Pinpoint's a bit strong. The equipment will be able to get us a rough location of any acceptable samples in the scan area. It'll be up to you, Kaiser, and I to find the things. Ready when you are. All right. 
Head over to the armory and gear up. Once you're done, we'll meet by the entrance to the city. Okay, optional, collect your gear. I mean, yeah, I'm always down for free gear. Free gear. Oh man, they're just not giving me anything here. Okay, that works for that. I could put that there. If I do, however... Okay, I've got two of these. Okay, and I need that for the other one. So we'll use that, and that. Then we'll use... gotta save this for the bottom. If I use that there, I can use that there and that there. How quickly can you get that done? Modified arc welder. mining suit. Deep mining suit. Jake and the Inu part two? A tale of enlightenment. I don't think I've read this one. Jake cursed and pleaded with the thieves, but it was no use. Soon every Inu was removed from the cave. Jake wept. What would become of the mountain? He continued visiting the cave each day. He cleaned the floors where the Eno had stood and recruited his good deeds, recorded, recited his good deeds to the wall. Jake dreaded the spring. Without the gift of the Eno's stream, what would become of his fields? Then in the spring, the stream flowed from the nearby cave. Jake was confused, but his family wasted no time. They cultivated their fields, and that summer they saw their most bountiful harvest in years. The following spring, the stream appeared again. Jake began to wonder, were more Inu hiding in the cave? He waded into the stream and traveled beyond the Inu's cavern, much further than he had before. But instead of more Inu, Jake found a large underground lake. He also found tunnels, bringing fresh water into the cave from the rainy side of the mountain. Later that, J that day, Jake traveled down to the village in the valley. He found its people desperate and their lands parched. Jake visited the farms of the village. He found an Inu statue placed in each one, but he could see that the rocky, dry land would never grow fruit. That evening, Jake returned to his wife and shared what he had seen. They spent all night looking down on the valley. In the morning, they called for their sons, and the family harvested their fields. They packed half of all they had grown in large wooden carts. The next day, Jake stood at the mouth of the Inu cave. He turned and joined his family as they traveled down the mountain. So that's part two in a much larger story that we don't have any parts to. So I look forward to completing that later. Hey, here's Bad Jokes, Bad People 3. We've read that one. Okay, to the cache. Transfers complete. Those codes will allow you to temporarily restore power to most facilities in the city. 
systems should shut themselves back down automatically. Duly noted, Commander. All right, what have we got? Scouts refined Equinox. Yes. Armor plated refined UC anti Xeno power pack. Hey. And that is going to be better than what I've got. Better physical, better energy, better EM, better thermal, worse airborne, but only by five. Lower mass. It's got the sturdy legendary effect, negative 15% incoming melee damage. It's got plus 20 to carrying capacity, which is exactly what I've got on the current one. And it's armor plated, negative 10% incoming physical energy and EM damage. It's better. Finally, I'll wear it. Incendiary refined UC anti Xeno space helmet. Oh my god! Better physical, better energy, better EM, worse thermal by 10, worse corrosive by 10, worse radiation by 5, so that's negative 25 resistances, but I've got the Beast Hunter, 15 damage from alien enemies, Analyzer, 15, uh, 10 damage to scanned targets, Incendiary, 10 chance to ignite nearby attackers, ooh, cool, I miss out on my O2 boosted, my oxygen capacity, which is a bummer. But I like incendiary. We'll take it. Plus, it looks a lot better. Sentinels refined UC anti Xeno spacesuit. Okay. Let's try that. Worse physical by uh, tw by f t 18 or so. Better energy by a whole lot. Better EM by 16, better corrosive by 10, better radiation by 5, worse thermal. I lose out on 40 thermal. Ooh, don't know if I like that. Beast Hunter, Auto Medic, nice, and Sentinel. Okay, well, they both had Sentinel, so I don't lose that. Um, yeah, I'll try it. Hello. Don't go into the city much. Never for long. Too risky. Why are these locked? Why is this locked? Ah, uh, must have been locked before the the <clears throat> before they had to flee the planet. Okay, so that could go there, leaving me with four on the middle. That works for all. That's the top only. Good. That goes there, which means nope, because it could also go there. That's all, that's all. Could go there, but if I use that, then I won't need that. And that's top only, so I want to save it if I can. <clears throat> that works for all, that works for all. That works for the top two only. If I put that there, then that works there. Then I've got overlap there. I could put that there. Could put that there but I've got overlap there I've got overlap with that and with that but I could do these two without any overlap okay um, but put that there gonna need this here that's gonna leave me one for the bottom and fix it with that hitman suppressed calibrated regulator worth it finally Ooh, a suppressed regulator. Nice. 
Berserker does more damage the less armor one has. Hitman damage while aiming. And it's got a suppressor. So, well, I mean, I was currently using the Urban Eagle only because it has a suppressor. And it's got the Furious Legendary effect. But this is going to do more damage. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put that in the one slot. Okay, uh, Breach, Instigating Refined Lawgiver, doesn't have a scope though. I also wish to be prepared for any situation, but there are practical limits, no? Well, a completely brand new suit of armor, uh, that's greatly gonna help. Carry of the Cosmos, we've read that. And a few decent weapons. But now I'm encumbered. Because of course I am. Charity in a Godless Universe Part 3. I think that's new. Amelia sang part three, when I was 19 years old, my church decided it was time to leave. The announcement was filled with phrases like fresh start and renewal. Apparently our settlement had taken in too many non-believers. The congregation would pack up and build a new colony on a distant world, a place without outsiders where their faith could become the law. Cowards, you're running away, I begged my family not to leave. These people came here for our help. If we take their generators, how will the rest of the colony survive? To most of my community, these arguments made no difference. They could only see the outsiders as outsiders, non-believers, who were preventing them from living a pure life. These people have been coming here since you were a little girl, my father told me one night. They've had nearly 20 years to hear the word of God, but that's not what they want. We will leave them to their lives, and they should leave us to ours. Word traveled quickly through the poor parts of the settlement. As the departure date neared, the other colonists became desperate. Protests were common outside the church buildings and outsiders of our starport, where a large arc-like ship was being constructed. Finally, on departure day, dozens of colonists gathered at the entrance to the starport. They blocked the church from entering, a hundred gaunt faces against a hundred blue robes. But the group was no match for the church's security forces. That team cleared a path, and the congregation boarded their ark. The crowd could only watch as the ships roared to life and then vanished into the sky. I stood in that crowd, watching as well. I could not bring myself to leave. Any faith which abandons the helpless was a faith I could not, be belie I could not believe in. A loving God who inspired such cruelty must not be real. I would stay behind for whatever came next. All right, well, that was new. Hey. Art Pixel says, did you get a bounty? Chat says you might have. What? I've got frostbite. Um, crime? How, where does it say where I've gotten a bounty? Total lifetime bounty, 850. Largest bounty, 500. Yeah. I got a bounty. How did I get a bounty? Their chest? They told me to come here and loot up. What do you mean I got a bounty for looting the chest? What? They told me to come here and take what I wanted. Hey, you match our description. The Vanguard captain? The cabinet wanted you to have something. Make sure you had the best tools for the task at hand. Now, if you'll excuse me. He gave me an X989 micro gun and a bunch of 7.77 millimeter ammunition and I'm encumbered again. That is so stupid. Because I didn't talk to the guy first? Ooh, long barrel, laser sights, tactical grip, tactical magazine, exterminator, 30% damage against aliens. That's gonna come in useful. And there's my lawgiver that I just got. I can't believe it. I had to speak to him first. That is so stupid. Wow, why?
I didn't take anything that was set to owned. That's got to be an oversight. All right, well, now I'm encumbered. What is it? I am happy to help shoulder the load. Okay, let's uh, go to my inventory and give her my old spacesuits. That puts me at 176, then let's give her the Urban Eagle, the other lawgiver. Now, the micro gun is interesting. I have a, a micro gun, <clears throat> but it's um, Space Adept and Hitman. In this particular situation, I'm going to want that 30% damage against aliens. So we'll give her the Hitman, and we'll equip the X-989. Zartet says, you weren't supposed to pick the lock, you goof. I guess. I guess I wasn't. So... Alright, now I'm no longer encumbered. Let's uh, slot this one to six. Yes! <sighs> Goodbye! She is so awkward. <laughs> okay. Set on your gear? You... Are you ready to do this? <clears throat> Chad says I need to give her one round for the microgun so she can use it. Oh. Alright, I'll do that. We can pass the soldier check to say, got the best team in the galaxy at my side. Couldn't be more ready. That's... That's damn right we are. Come on. Let's get out there. Kaiser? Percival, everything green on your ends? I am ready. Personal comm should be routed through Kaiser now. You copy that? Roger, loud and clear. Perhaps too loud. Oh, you're a riot robot. <laughs> Kaiser, kick it off. Unlock code transmitted. You may open the gate when ready. Proceed into the city. All right, well, let me give her ammunition yes. so she can... Use the I weapons keep I gave her. whatever you give me, yes? That is the deal? That's not the deal, no. All right, so we'll go to my inventory and ammunition. Let's give her one of these. Oh, my God. Oh, really? There we go. I have to drag it. One of those. One of those so she can use whichever gun she wants. Oh, that's, this is going to take forever. Let's, um, what's the weapon? When did I steal ammunition? Never mind, that's going to take forever. There we go. Uh, Gemini Gaming says if you zoom out into the planet map, it should tell you top right corner if you have a bounty. Back to it then. I don't see it. I don't see a bounty. Top right corner. I realize my camera is covering the top right corner, but I don't see anything there. All right. I'll just be careful.
All right, let's save. All right. On our way into the city. Percival, where are we heading? <laughs> Running the first sweep. Got one. A Sealy's. Not far. Old shipping yard just past the processing plant. Gene samples are probably in one of the containers. All right, I've got some sickness here. Let's go to status and cure that. Um, I've got frostbite. So let's use something that gets rid of frostbite. There we go. nearby, keeping it under its sway. Let's put it down. Am I going to be given time to loot? Locked! Is this going to give me a bounty too? Alright, uh, let's see. No, yes. Leaves me with one, but I don't have a single. So I, oh no, that leaves me with this. Alright, so that'll work there. And that'll work there, only for the top. Easy. Everything else is for the bottom. Can't be used. Can't be used. It's going to make this easy for me. There it goes there. That goes there. Hooray! Oh. Frostbite game! Do I have something that can protect me from frostbite while I'm in environments like this? Because I just gained frostbite again. I'm so bummed I can't loot vacuum tape and it counts as adhesive. Alright, we got one more guy over there. I'm just doing a quick scan to see if there's any loot. Oh, there he is in that room. Right, I don't think there's much else up here. Looks like the last of them. No sign of the morph, though. Your shipping yard's just beyond the processing plant. Cash with some goodies is towards the rear of the facility. Kaiser. All right. Close enough for you to dial in the location of those samples from here? Yes, they're faint, but I'm detecting multiple valid signatures. I have restored power to the containers. Jackpot! 
Get down there and collect as many as you can. Art Pixel says make a save in each area. There's a known Kaiser pathing bug. Okay. Thank you for that one. I'll do that. Hey. Oh. All right. All the goodies. Digipix galore. <laughs> Am I going to get a bounty for this? Freaking game. Why buy ammo? This is my this is what I'm saying. Why spend money on ammo? Cuz this I just all the time Exterminator, modified, refined coachman. Ugh, another A99. I mean, I'd get a lot of money if I sold that, but gosh. Infantry alpha. Increases firearm. Expert lock. God, all these freaking locks. Oh. All right. Focus. Bottom only. Oh, it could go there. It could go there. Probably want to take it there. Bottom or top. If we did the bottom, it could go there. So then I would want to put that one there, but then that would leave me with a single. Let's just put this one here for now. This was bottom only. Oh crap. Okay. Uh, it could go there. It could go there. Jeez. This is gonna be driving me crazy. This is also for the bottom. Also for the bottom. Jeez. All right, well, let's focus on the top. All of these are for the bottom. Bottom, 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 bottom. All right, that's bottom or top, so that's probably going to be needed for the top. Um, that's also... No, that's bottom or top. Bottom or top. Um, I'll just use them both for the top. Because that could go there. I want to. I want to save the single just in case I need it at the end. So we'll put that there. We'll put that there. Then we've got the middle ring. And I gotta use both of these for the middle ring. No. Ah, oh, crap. Well, great. I think I might have boned myself here. Um. Um. No. Yes. So I could put that there. Uh, I could put that there. Overlap, though. No overlap. But if I put it there, there is overlap. Overlap. I could put it there. Overlap. No overlap. No, that is overlap. Okay, so I can't use that one. Here, let's just auto slot one. Okay. Overthinking it. Technophiles calibrated Beowulf. Wow. That's a lot of good mods on there. But no legendary effects. Take everything, says the chat. Man, I just, I just can't, I can't take everything. I'm too much. Take that. I'm gonna be encumbered here pretty soon. I need something that protects me from the elements because I keep getting frostbite. Um, and I don't know if there's anything that's gonna do that. Addictions. Damage and energy resistance for 30 seconds. Treatment. Treats, 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 damage resistance, movement speed, treats, 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 cures, just keep treating it says chat. Yeah, I might have to do that. I'm just looking to see if there's something that can protect me while I'm using this. 
And I don't think I have, I have anything that does that. Yeah, I don't. So I just got to keep treating it. I've only got two of these uh, left. God. now that was all my ammo though <laughs> Brian says I think you missed some super chats sorry about that uh, I see art pixels about making each save uh, I see Brian's that says give her a micro and a single bullet just like settlers in Fallout 4 okay thank you Brian Isaacs uh, yeah I think that's the only super chat I missed thank you for letting me know And I'm encumbered. Of course I am. What did you need? And I gained frostbite again. Did you need me to carry something for you? Shipify says, who's talking? That was the Terramorph. They can speak into your mind and make you hallucinate. Let's go to my inventory. What am I going to give her? Um... I'm two pounds over. Uh, let's give her some of my explosives. All right, then. There's something in this cage. There's something in each of these cages. Engaging. Got one in this crate. Storage container open. I should have put my mines down here. <laughs> Can I get some? Uh, but they're all walking around me. Andrea, 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 where you go? Come here, come here. Mm -hmm. Yes. I am always willing to carry an ex. Okay, she's got my mines. Uh. Right. 
Okay, everyone stand back. Stand back. Come on. No, don't step on the mines! Andrea! Oh. Oh, there's nothing in here. One of them is going to have a terror morph. So these are just the samples that we needed, but one of them is going to have a terror morph. I bet you anything. All right, wrong side. Not everything in the galaxy needs to come with us, you know. You really don't... Xeno Warfare Tech! Hey. I mean... I'll go to the wolf system. Xeno Warfare Tech. <laughs> probably shouldn't be selling this information. It's probably, you know, really bad to sell. Hello. Need that looks like I was I'm wrong. Carrying? Let's go ahead and uh, storm uh, the really heavy uh, mines. We're still overburdened. Let's give her my shrapnel grenades. Still overburdened. Let's give her my incendiary and impact grenades. Still overburdened. Let's give her all my grenades. Still overburdened. My God. Let's give her the coachman. There we go. Ah, yes, we are done. All right, are these all the storage containers? I think there are a few more down here. All right, now we go to the containers up here. Digipix, story of the heavens. Mando Cool Cat says, your suit thermostat depletes in freezing rain. <clears throat> Once it depletes, you get frostbite, but it'll regen if you stop undercover like a tarp. Oh, thank you, Mando Cool Cat. Signata says, did you see that the uh, Baldur Skate 3 devs patched the approval bug? That's why your companions were all over you. Oh, really? So now they're, now they're going to be harder to, to, to get approval for, huh? <laughs> okay, I didn't see that. I'll have to read up on that later. Story of the heavens. Ever since Neil Armstrong first set foot on the moon in 1969, humanity has been observe it, uh, obsessed with the idea of permanently breaking free from the confines of Earth's gravity. Not just visiting other planets, but settling them, truly living among the stars. But in the mid-20th century, that dream proved short-lived. The Apollo 17 mission in 1972 was the last time humans set foot on the moon, and for several, several decades afterward, NASA's mission seemed to focus on... Okay, I, th I think we already read this one, actually. Yeah, I remember reading it. Oh, mech component components. That's what's weighing me down. All of these mech components. <laughs> uh, Andrea, Did save me. Did you need something? 
I keep whatever. What can I give her? What can I give her? I'm gonna give her all of my resources. And she's full. Is that it then? Fields of Everglass, again, I think this is new. An excerpt from the highly acclaimed novel Fields of Everglass set in the near future during a fictional wartime era. And yet, Tal'at did not back down. Nope, we read this one. They're coming! They're coming! The terror morphs! They're all over the place! I don't know what's worse, the thought of them ripping apart my body, or that weird one ripping apart my mind. I have one option left. Suicide. Poor guy. All right, so the, the rest is in this final one. Let's finish looting the place first, and then we'll try the final one. Can't open that one. Okay, I think we did all the ones down there. Oh, come on. And there's the Terramorph we killed. The cloaked one. Okay. A shattered shock. Ooh. Nice. All Asili's samples collected. All right. Can I hand those over to Kaiser and let's get out of here. Sounds good. Okay, Kaiser, come here. Samples secure. Nice work. Now, earlier scan picked up a valid Terramorph sample, but, well, it's in the spaceport. And the quick route there looks like it got blasted when the port did. There are steam tunnels under the city which will allow us to access the spaceport. What do you... That, that's right. Kaiser, how did you know that? I... am not sure. Percival, you see any better option? Not from where I'm standing. Huh. Then we've got our answer. Access unlocked. We may proceed. Interesting. So Kaiser knew something about the tunnel systems here, but he doesn't even know how he knew it. That is intriguing. Right. We got everything in there, right? Yep. We explored that building, right? That's the one we came out of, I think. Londinian Steam Tunnels. Kaiser, this flora, this is Lazarus plant, isn't it? Confirmed. You know, no one even realized it was a living thing until someone got it under a microscope and saw it had cells. Can't be cultivated anywhere but Londinian. Huh. A real marvel. A marvel? 
Also, I wonder if, if it has anything to do with the terror morphs. All these leeches. Heat leeches. What's keeping you things warm? Hey. Ablet of Advanced Deep Seeker Space Helmet. All right, team, down here. Bounty Hunter Stock Skip Pack. A skip capacity boost pack. Uh, it's better in every way, but no legendary effects, and I don't want to carry it around, so I'm going to leave it. Recon Stim. What's my god, look at it. A Lazarus in bloom. You know, we might be some of the only... What's... What's happening? Captain, are you seeing this? Oh! Oh my gosh! That's where they come from, really? Morphs oh are heat leeches. The heat leeches are terramorphs. <laughs> of but course. Heat leeches infest every settlement, every corner of the settled systems. That means that every single one. Oh no. You just saw that, right? You would tell me if I was losing my mind. That heat leech became a terramorph. The pests that have snuck onto every planet are baby <laughs> terramorphs. <laughs> Heat leeches hide out in ships, sneak away after landing, and then, with time, they transform. We... we just found out how terramorphs move between planets. And why they only target human systems. Because human ships that they attach to are the only ones that can ferry them from planet to planet. But this means that they can't transform into terramorphs without this unique plant that only grows here on Londinian. So that still doesn't explain why the heat leech is transformed into terramorphs on other planets. Though it does explain what happened here at Londinian. What does this mean for the plans to clean up the terramorphs? That I don't have an answer for right now. But if they share a genome, like most nymphs and adults do, the microbe should have no problem dealing with heat leeches and terramorphs. The Asilis we'll have to look into, but given what we know about the creatures, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked to find that they've got an appetite for both. Well, I mean, this means that uh, the microbe solution would, would be a much better one. <clears throat> what we just witnessed, that can't be how all terror morphs are born, right? No, Lazarus plants can't grow anywhere but here, let alone blossom. People have tried. Plus, if what we just witnessed was happening anywhere else, well, it wouldn't just be Londinian lost to these things. What we just saw, it, it must be some kind of alternate growth method. One that winnows 70 years of maturation into seconds. It's incredible. Mm, okay. This feels like a pretty major discovery. Pretty major is right. But if what we just saw, if that's possible, the Lazarus plant, it's clearly an accelerant for the terramorph, a heat leech transformation process. Make one into the other in an instant. But that means if anyone knew about this, they could trigger a terramorph spawning. God. You could sneak a leech into a city or even multiple leeches into a place like New Atlantis. Good God. The attack on New Atlantis, does this... 
Could someone have set that up? I mean, it's the only thing that makes sense. For the Terramorphs to just <clears throat> storm Londinian right in the middle of the colony war, someone must have known how to trigger the, the, the transformation. I'm betting it has something to do with the Freestar Collective. Could be House Varun, but my bet is Freestar Collective. I don't want to think about that right now, or I can't imagine what it would take to pull something like that off, or given what we just witnessed, it's certainly plausible. But first, you'd have to know the truth about all this. Well, we're never gonna know if you don't catch that thing. Get after it! We may proceed. Go! Kill the Terramorph! All right. It won't have uh, a long life, that's for sure. The Paradiso Complex? Oh, we read this one. This was hilarious. <laughs> it's about the resort. The rest of the novel is just as painful to read. <laughs> right, well, let's go team. I only have 700 rounds left. Cell data from the new Atlantis and Tau Ceti attacks, right? I'm loading them myself. Captain, let Kaiser take a look at that sample. Give the sample to Kaiser. Beginning analysis. It is a match. This suggests with high certainty that the Lazarus plant was used to trigger the attacks on both planets. Uh, there's no way a plant this rare, this. Fragile just shows up here, New Atlantis, and Tau Ceti. The transformations on those worlds, they must have been triggered by human hands. I agree. Captain, do you understand what it is we just stumbled on here? I do. Someone has weaponized Terramorphs. Well, um, I think it means that the Lanzar's plant was used to trigger the attack in New Atlantis. Exactly. Someone saw the Lazarus plant in action and used it to trigger the attacks. I wonder where they could have gotten such an idea, deploying alien life forms as weapons. Hmm. I wouldn't be shocked to find out our team, in part, inspired the approach, but our group never dealt with something that could have an effect like this. It makes some sense, actually. Tau Ceti was likely their first test. Someplace remote where no one would question a few settlers going missing. Ensure the big show, the attack on New Atlantis, would be a success. And the timing of that one. It couldn't have been just luck that it happened right when we were asking the Cabinet to do something about the Terramorphs. These attacks. I think someone planned them to set all this in motion. But didn't you say this plant can't grow anywhere but here? It can't. At least, I didn't think it could. But maybe if we're right about this, someone bound away. I thought the timings of those terramorphs showing up was suspicious. They certainly were. But having this answer, well, it raises a couple big questions. Who could pull something like this off? And why? 
The United Colonies! Someone inside the UC must have plans for the Lazarus plant. The Freestar Collective makes the most sense. They'd be happy to see the UC suffer. We don't have any evidence. Let's not go start pointing fingers and raising suspicions. We need to find evidence first and let the evidence bring us to the culprit. I've got some ideas, but it's far from responsible to just start hurling accusation accusations. Commander Hatoum or one of her soldiers, they're the most likely to know about this. It was House Varun, trust me, those guys are the worst. Maybe some independent group like the Ecliptic. They're always looking for firepower. I honestly have no idea. We'll go with, um... You... You okay, Captain? Let's not hurl accusations. Let's save the discussion for when you all aren't standing in the universe's closest equivalent to hell frozen over. If we're gonna do anything to prevent more Terra Morph attacks, human cause or otherwise, we need that final sample. Roger that. Kaiser, get us into the spaceport. The entrance is this way. Hang tight, buddy. I got a loot. But there's nothing up here. sufficient power to the lock mechanism. Anyone got ideas where we could get some extra juice? Local power looks like it was controlled in the security office. Upper floor. Captain and I can scout it out. Kaiser, see if you can't find another way to get it open. Roger that. I have restored power to the office entrance. You may proceed. Right. I just like that they're separating us right now. Something bad always happens when they separate us. And there's the control panel. Still looks operable. Of all the things to survive. Oh, a master lock safe. Advanced, advanced. So many safes. And two lockers. Oh. Advanced, advanced. Oh. Fine. Okay. Top only. Bottom only. Top only. Oh, great. Overlap. Fun. There we go. Overlap solved. Aurora! <laughs> King Onyx says there's a key for the locker, Zox. Oh, really? What is Aurora doing here? Where's the key? Where's the locker key? I don't want to hack all these freaking lockers. Hey! Contraband locker key! Yay! Thank you, King Onyx. More Aurora? <laughs> All right. Wow, 
Wow, remind me I to not forget to stop by Wolf. All right, now for the now for the big one. I've got two auto slots. I'm gonna use them on the master. Okay, none, bottom, bottom, none, both, bottom, both, bottom. All right, so we need to use the both. Okay. Place that there. No, that doesn't work. Ooh. No? Yes. Yes. Calibrated old earth hunting rifle. I don't have the room for it. My inventory is just too full. I gotta leave it, even though it sells well. All right, I'm going to do a hard save here, just in case there's a, a pathing glitch. Reactivated. Error. Control system reboot required. And we do that. Ah, Captain. I think I see it. He bombed the spaceport, not just to kill the terror morphs, but to kill the people who knew how the terror morphs were created. Everyone who saw them spawn from heat leeches had to die. Ouch. Right, I'm gonna do a hard save here. Hey, Victus. He destroyed this place killed these people to keep what he knew about the Lazarus plant and the terror morphs and all this a secret. Didn't he? Never learned this reading minds trick you seem to have mastered. There were plenty of reasons he could have ordered the bombing. The terror morph outbreak, for example. Or well, that's certainly how I interpreted it. He saw the potential of the plant as a weapon and hid it away. He killed those people. Condemned this city to keep them from sharing what they might have seen. He was a... was... 
It was complicated, wasn't he? <clears throat> he was a cold-blooded murderer. Yes. He was a commander in a tough situation. Yes. He was someone who thought keeping the secret would save lives also. Yes. All three of these things are true. What would any of us have done in that situation? If one person knew how terror morphs were created, they could have terrorized every human settlement What's going around through your head right now? the settled systems. And yet, there's no getting around the fact that it was murder. The middle ground is this. He was a commander in a tough situation. That is a disgusting way to describe what happened here. Someone who truly knows what it means to command, to be in charge of and responsible for others, would never do such a thing. He decided to sentence his own soldiers to death. What kind of commander is that? But I guess... I guess that's just another part of his sick legacy now. He thought he was protecting us all, taking the secret to his grave. Only he didn't succeed. Now someone else knows about the Lazarus plant and is using it exactly how he feared. Yeah, ultimately, despite what he did, it didn't work. Now, we could say, Hadrian, your father, he's still alive. The UC have been keeping him prisoner. Or we could lie and say, you're right, he's long gone, and it's up to us to get to the bottom of this. Shipify says, exactly, so it was murder. It was murder, no matter how you look at it. Even if he could have prevented this knowledge from escaping, it was still murder, and it, it wasn't justified. Um... It was just a really, really difficult situation for him. On one hand, he was doing hey, what he Ictus. thought was right. He saw it too. And he was doing it not to better himself, but for the sake of humanity. His motivation was to preserve humanity. What, what is a handful of lives? What are 20 people when all of humanity is at risk? But things like this can't be contained. They just can't. Which is what this quest is showing us. Um. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. Brian Gandy became a bronze ox. Thank you so much, Brian Gandy. The, the, the reason I'm hesitant to tell her the truth, even though I want to, every fiber of my being wants to tell her about her father, because I think that she does deserve to know. She certainly sees him as a father figure. They're cut from the same cloth. I'm as shocked as you are. She's invested in his fate and in what he did while, while he was alive and by the fact that she shares DNA with him. And yet, the knowledge of his existence, that he is still alive, that very knowledge could start a war. It could restart the colony war. And for some reason, the UC felt that we needed to know that. And so now we have this heavy burden. And we can't share that heavy burden with someone else right now. So we're gonna lie and say you're right. He's long gone and it's up to us to get to the bottom of this. That's exactly right. Let's move. The settled systems are counting on us. Crippled. Guys, I got hypothermia. Unlock successful. Guys, your sample. It moved. I'd be real careful out there if I were you. That doesn't sound good. Eyes peeled. I'm gonna treat it before I get into combat here. Uh, whoops. Do I only have one? There we go. Heal paste. Frostbite cured.
Should we push the fancy switch? Quick save. Well, nothing seems to have happened. gonna pop up out of the ground, isn't it? Oh. As soon as I get close, it's gonna pop up out of the ground. We got corpses everywhere. God. He rained down devastation on the spaceport. Took out all these ships. What a thing to do. Mando Cool Cat says, fighting for a greater good leads to a greater evil. Not necessarily. Sacrificing others for the greater good leads to greater eagle, e evil. Making a sacrifice that isn't your, your own to make for the quote-unquote greater good leads to great evil. And that's what he did here. He sacrificed other people's lives. It's not like he could have reasoned with them or talked with them about it. <clears throat> because who's going to say, yes, I, I, I agree to to be killed to prevent the secret from coming out. Everyone would have said, no, 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 no. I won't tell anyone, sure. Um, so it was a difficult position, but sacrificing other people because you know best is, is always a bad move. So what he did is really inexcusable. Once information, it's kind of like the atomic age all over again. like. Once nuclear weapons were invented, there's no killing the people who were part of the Manhattan Project. There's no burying knowledge of nukes. It's out there. It's in the world. You can't contain it. That's sort of the same thing we've got going on here with the heat leech thing. Here we go. Yes! I guess we should grab that sample while we can. 
Okay. Well, while I was doing that, they finished him off. <laughs> Signata says maybe that's why the UNC leaders were executed. To get rid of the information about how this started. But then that would mean that whoever executed them would know. You would only execute the leaders of all of these atrocities for the knowledge they contained if you also knew those knowledge. So someone was left alive with knowledge of what heat leeches could do. And I think we're about to find out who that person was. Good. Now just stash that sample with Kaiser and we're done. Final sample secure. All wrapped up. Time to get the hell out of here. Percival, you should unplug and find somewhere we can talk. Privately. On it. See you soon. Return to forward base 441. Brendan Smith says, did you get all of the free gear at the start, Ox? I got as much as I could carry, yeah. All right, do we run back or do we fast travel back? I think I think I want to try to fast travel. Okay, up there. So now we've got this awful information. And we've got to share it. frantic on the comms towards the end there, but it sounded like this was a success. Got everything we need to put this plan in motion. <clears throat> Is the plan going to still work now that we've got to clean up heat leeches and terramorphs? Can't be positive until we run some tests, but knowing that the terramorphs have been masquerading as heat leeches all this time is a big find. Arguably makes things more feasible now that we know what we're dealing with, not less. Agreed. Plus, I don't think you're going to have to push real hard to get folks on board with cleaning up one of the galaxy's greatest pests if this is what they're capable of. But none of that's getting done without the samples. You do have them, right? Nearly cost a couple of fingers and toes, but yes, we got them. we sure did. Kaiser's got all the samples in storage. Ah, uh, best place for them. Now, my connection might have gotten a bit fuzzy there, but do I have it right that Vey Victus knew about this damn plant? That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Guess the old Admiral must have told someone what he learned. Even he's not clever enough to pull off an attack like that from the great beyond. Ooh. Oh! What if he was the only one who knew that information? Oh, shoot! What if Vevictus was doing all of this? Oh! <laughs> I didn't think about that! Now I am thinking about that. As far as we know, the only human being alive who knew that heat leeches could transform into terramorphs was Ve Victus, who was supposed to be dead, but who was kept alive. But then again, it goes back to what I was saying. If he was killed for the knowledge he had, someone else knew the knowledge he had, which necessitated him being killed. Well, we can again lie and say you're right. Ve Victus couldn't have been involved with the attacks. Crap. But why would he do it? Why would he attack New Atlantis of all places?
This is a moral quandary. I worry that this is our last opportunity to rally other people to the knowledge that Ve Victus could be the, the mastermind criminal here. And if we lose that opportunity, I wonder if we'll ever be able to make him see justice if it turns out that it was him. But the alternative is that this knowledge gets out and the Free Star Collective starts a war again. So we'll lie for now. <laughs> no ghost is that clever. But it's clear someone knows about the plant and realized what ends it could be put towards. Captain, we need to get these samples back to the lab and verify we'll be able to handle cleaning up the leeches as well as the terramorphs. But in the interim, do you think you could look into what we uncovered? See if you can turn up any information on who might have committed the attacks? If it were me, I started the scene of the crime. New Atlantis. Well, I've already got some ideas of who could have been involved. Perfect. Once you finish your investigation, we'll meet you outside the cabinet chambers. They're gonna want to hear this. Take care of yourself. No telling who might be involved. Well... <clears throat> Visiting Londinian has left me with a longing for Nera. I did not think this was possible. You gonna be all right, Kaiser? Best of luck on your fact-finding mission. <laughs> all right. Terramorphs are heat leeches. Considering what else we found, that might be the least surprising. I really need to find out his motive because. That was quite a leap. So the problem is that he's sacrificed all of those soldiers, all of those men and women, to keep the secret safe, to prevent... Ooh, what's this? Corrosive, calibrated, urban eagle. I'll take it. He sacrificed all of those people to keep this a secret. He was the only one left alive who knew. But then he would, 20 years later, use that secret to do exactly what he feared would happen? Why? Because of what happened to him. Because he felt betrayed by the very people he tried to save. And he was sick of it. Well, we've... I think we have a motive. We certainly have... the means. And there's no other explanation. Normal user says, Oxhorn, don't forget to go to the wolf system and sell your contraband. Thank you. And it looks like I do have an affliction again. Let's, ooh, whoa. <laughs> I've got hypothermia and protection regenerating. What does that mean? Protection regen. Okay. Well, I got to cure my hypothermia. See if we can find one instead of using both. There we go. An injector. Is mining on the schedule today? KMCD says he didn't fear, he was in awe of the power, of the potential. You know what, that's a great point. We've been assuming that his motives the entire time was to protect humanity from what the Terramorphs could do. We go again. You're at 
advised to leave this orbit immediately. The United Colonies will not be held responsible for any harm you suffer by proceeding. I'm not trying to land on the planet, I just took off from there. Let me check my logs. <laughs> Alright, you can proceed. We'll let them know you're on your way down. Right. Um, anyway, as I was saying, we've been assuming that his motives for destroying the spaceport was to prevent humanity from ever learning about that. But it could be that once he learned about it and he realized the destructive power, that he wanted that for himself, that he wanted to harness it, and he wanted to keep that information out of the knowledge of the general public so that only he and those he approved of could use that power. That could have been his motive the entire time. Responding to hail, you are cleared to dock. Welcome to UC Space. Gustavo Plays says he does have a bounty. I just saw it. Crap. Well, I'm gonna go clear my bounty then, I guess. This station is but a shadow of its former purpose. I do not like it here. You should inspect your ship for heat leeches every couple landings. They'll cause plenty of If there's anything I can do. Yes, of course. Let's go to cell. Miscellaneous. There we go. A uh, corrosive urban eagle. <clears throat> I don't think I have a legendary urban eagle yet. Shattered shock. That's a unique one. <clears throat> Breaks through even the strongest armor. It's got the shattering effect. Which is going to be great for the kind of weapon it is. So I think I want to take it home and compare with what I've got there. Ah, uh, hello. If I can take a few things, I... Let's see, she's got... I can sell that. She can keep the uh, micro gun for now. Uh, let's sell that. I'm gonna get all my resources back and I'll put them on the ship when I get there. That is all. Very well. Was there something you... I hope we have what you... Paladin Dance's girlfriend says the plant name is Lazarus. Um... Lazarus was risen from the dead. Okay. Oh, I've got the I've got Aurora. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Right, I need to get rid of the Aurora. Thank you, chat. What's interesting is that the quest is clearly pushing me to um, see that Vey Victus is somehow uh, responsible. Uh, because it's telling me to go and... Um, I try not to trade in gossip, How may but the if trade you have any verifiable assist information, you. I'm all ears. By all means. Let's go to Cell, Aid, Aurora. 
And we're clear. What were you trying to say? That's a little surprising, isn't it? No. Nope. Out. Au revoir, as they say. It's that guy. Am I still encumbered? How am I still encumbered? Oh, that's right. I've got all of the stuff that I wanted to put on the ship. Anyway, as I was saying, um... It sounds like the quest is really trying to push us towards the idea that Vedictus is responsible for this. Um, because it's sending us back to Atlantis to quote-unquote do an investigation, right? But the only place we can go is to talk to Vedictus. So I think the way the quest was primarily designed is for us to realize that Vedictus was responsible and then tell everybody, and then they would have said, oh, well, yeah, he did it, so you need to go and confront him. Let's see what happens when we get there. But first of all, I'm going to stash all of my resources. And then I need to go clear my bounty. Right. So we're going to go to Aquila. Oh. Uh, cargo hold, inventory, go to resources, and store all. That helps. Three. Where was Aquila City again? I thought it was in Narian. No, no, it was in Cheyenne. There we go. Oh my god, which planet was it? Aquila, there we go. Aquila City. I went through a brief period where I thought it might be exciting to be a professional Ashta hunter. A very, very brief period. Evening, sir. I know Aquila City rather well. Perhaps better than I would like. Clear bounty, says Michael Seacrest. Thank you. Three hundred and fifty credits. Oh, this is an awful spot. That guy in the kilt detailing says, um, You can't compare nukes to terror morphs. Physics is physics. Soviet Union gleaned knowledge from U.S. scientific papers on high-energy particles in the atmosphere, etc. It could also be independently researched. For this, you'd have to see it, uh, see that in person. Um... I, I see your point, but biology is biology as well. Physics are part of the natural universe. Biology is part of the natural universe. This wasn't something solely man-made. This was something discovered, a natural discovery on a planet. <clears throat> and um, is this the only planet so far? But we don't know for sure that it's not on other planets. It's 
compares in that um, nuclear weapons are weapons of mass destruction that, um, when in the wrong hands, can be used to you know devastate humanity. It doesn't compare in that nuclear power can be a, a good thing. Whereas I don't see anything good about the Terramorph situation that we've seen here. Okay. Is this city meant to inspire or intimidate? Perhaps it depends on your reason for being here. You will be scanned as you enter the city. Well, I'm really interested to see how this conversation is going to go. I wonder if he's going to own up to it. Or if is we're going to find out miss? something completely different. Something amiss? What's up? Yes, you need me? Indeed I do. All yours. Credits. Hey, she gives out random credits. I love it. Until next time. What are you holding? Well, what a pleasant surprise. When I heard you and Hadrian were headed for Londinian of all places, I presumed you must be onto something big. Did you find what you were looking for? I don't know. Is there anything you want to tell me about your time in Londinian? We could say, don't play dumb. We know you were behind the attacks on New Atlantis and Town City. We could say, oh, we did, and a whole lot more. Let's try. Is there anything you want to tell us? I haven't been to Londinian in many years. Why? Is there some way I could be of assistance? Were you able to recover what you were looking for? <laughs> Let's see how far we can get in the conversation without letting him know that we suspect something. So we'll say, oh, we did, and a whole lot more. Good news, then. So, what exactly are you doing here? Plenty still to be done in defeating the Terramorphs, no? We could say, please stop. You murdered UC citizens, and you're going to pay for it. Now confess. We could say, I know you've, you're involved in attacking Tau Ceti and New Atlantis. <clears throat> we could say, we found a recording of you discussing the use of Terramorphs as a weapon. Let's present him with the evidence before we, we make accusations. Did you? Well, I don't know what you think you heard on this recording, but I sincerely hope you didn't come to the wrong conclusions. After all, given the Cabinet's current state of anxiety, they might misinterpret such a discovery to mean I could have been involved with the attacks. Perhaps I can 
convince you to keep this among us? Uh... No? Why? So you're re you really don't know anything about the attacks? Is that what you're claiming? Of course. Do I look like I'm in any position to do what you're describing? So I'd very much appreciate your agreement to not share what you found. We uh. wouldn't want anyone else jumping to conclusions now, would we? We could say no more lies, confess, or I turn over what I found. I mean, that's not a way to get a confession. Because you could just confess to make sure that you don't turn it in. We could say, sorry, I'm telling the cabinet what we learned. Consider this your chance to come clean. Or I've got no plans to tell anyone. I just want to know the truth. Well, no more secrets. We've got to come... We've got to tell the cabinet what we've learned. We'll give him a chance to come clean. <laughs> you know, you're far more clever than I expected. You want to hear the words, then? I did it. The terror morph attacks on Tau City. New Atlantis. My doing. Years of coordination between my associate and I. Figuring out how to deploy the Lazarus plant's pollen outside of Londinian. Learning to synthesize it. Use it as a weapon. Now, being as clever as you are, I'm sure you have thoughts on why I might do such a thing. Revenge. But did you have another reason? Associate, who have you been working with? All in due time. First, I want to see if you're truly as astute as you appear. So why would someone like me go through all this trouble? Well, because you're a madman and a murderer and you live to sow death. Probably not. To work on something that long, this seems personal. Yes. No better way to show the UC what a deadly weapon they have in the, the, uh, have in the Lazarus plant. A plant than to use it. Well, okay, so we have to decide, did he do this for revenge because he's so pissed off that they kept him in prison for all this long, or did he really just do it to make a demonstration to, to show the UC that they could have been using this all this time? If that, then he could... He Biding your time, then. He clearly misjudged the character of the United Colonies. The United Colonies wants to maintain peace at the moment. They really don't want to start another war. But he might not think that. He might still be of the opinion that the UC really wants to dominate, which is why he felt like he had to show them this information. Let's go with this. Mm, not a bad thought, but no. The attacks were a correction. When I discovered the plant, I did consider handing over what I'd found, but we were at war. And I can risk information that dangerous falling into the wrong hands. So I ordered the bombing of the Londinian spaceport, fixing two problems at once, halting the spread of the city's terramorph outbreak and sealing away knowledge of the plant's potential. Right, but that doesn't explain why he then attacked New Atlantis years later. You didn't even trust your own people in the UC? These were the final days of the colony war, Captain. The Freestar Collective had spies everywhere. I was concerned that if word got out, the Collective could swoop down, start breeding Lazarus plants, and overrun our worlds with waves of terramorphs. Just like what was happening on Londinian at that very moment. Sealing off the city to prevent mass death, it was the only option that made sense at the time. That information should have been handed over, secured it to keep it from ever being used. <clears throat> you just said it took you years to use the plant outside of Londinian. You killed them for nothing. Please, no secret is so dangerous that you can justify condemning so many lives. Number two is my instinct, because as we talked about earlier, once something like this is revealed, there's no way to keep it contained. Um, and he just proved it. Simple to say now, 
But with the outbreak raging from a barely understood source, the moment demanded quick action. So I did what was required. I removed the dangerous variable from an already catastrophic war. But then, as the war ended, my trial, my execution, I made a decision. After all, I'd given everything for the colonies. My life as I knew it included. And what did I get in return? Was there any effort by the UC to protect my legacy? My daughter's legacy? No. We were sacrificed when all we did was serve. So I kept what I'd learned and arranged the attacks to set things right again. My daughter... What? She becomes a hero. I become a trusted advisor, having found Kaiser, the research team, and cement my new position of influence when I hand them the name of the person responsible for the attack on New Atlantis. The dear departed Dr. Reginald Orlais, the associate who aided me all these years, and whom I always slated to take the fall. What luck he was stopped dead before he could hurt anyone else. His decades on the run brought to an end by another unlikely hero. You. He did all of this just so that his daughter could become a hero? Oh my god. <laughs> well, we knew that it was uh, a personal motive. I thought it was going to be vengeance. I thought it was because he was so pissed off that they did this to him for all those years. And it was part of that. He did it because of his legacy. He was sad about what happened to his legacy, but it was mainly he wanted his daughter to be hailed as a hero. And why the hell do you care if the UC wants you as an advisor? Why would I want to be in the good graces of the people who control my very life? I don't know, Captain. Maybe I still dream of a life outside these walls someday. A new face would be needed, of course, but it wasn't an impossibility. Though now, I'm not so sure. How could you have coordinated all of this from here? It wasn't easy. But the beauty of being loathed is that people will do whatever they can not to deal with you. They wanted to pretend I didn't exist. And so I used their blind eye to my advantage. Still, establishing a back channel to Orlais via the UC recovery teams was painstaking work. I've led campaigns less nerve-wracking. They believed they were luring in wanted criminals, but were in fact delivering precisely encoded slates, filled with instructions invisible to any but their recipient, dropped off at just the right moments to fall into the proper hands, all without the UC realizing whom you were actually dealing with. Slow work. <laughs> but as you can see, ultimately effective. And he's just dumping the entire plot now. He's so proud of how smart he was. Or Lace, why does that name sound... Why do we have this option? We just went through the dialogue about how we killed the guy. All right, let's see what he says. Can't remember the many lives you've taken. <laughs> or Lace was the man whose death you brought about around the moon of Etheria. The pilot of the Warlock. The man I had to eliminate. To hide my secret. Well, I mean, we didn't eliminate him. He committed suicide. We could say, ah, so I'm just your cleanup crew. You must think you're very clever. Or so you murdered UC citizens because of some slight against your honor? You're sick. Let's try, you must think you're very clever. Captain, please. You've benefited here as much as I have. Maybe more. It's why I had our lays reprogram Kaiser. Had that old machine guide you to where I found the plant all those years ago. I went to great lengths to ensure your and Hadrian's success. And look at the results. I know for a fact the Cabinet's planning to honor both you and Hadrian once this is all done. Isn't that preferable to languishing away in obscurity? Running jobs on the tail end of nowhere for the Vanguard? With only the vague hopes of perhaps earning the right to buy a home in the well someday. What kind of honors are we talking about here? <laughs> Sounds 
something befitting the dedication to the colonies you two have shown. While of course they can't give you a command, responsibility like that has to be earned. The cabinet does have access to... considerable resources. I expect you'll be quite pleased with the result. And none of it would have happened without my intervention. We could say, I suppose there have been some benefits to all of this. We could say, if you're waiting for me to say thank you, we're going to be here for a while. We could say, they'd be honoring me for cleaning up your messes. I'm going to say, look, he killed innocent civilians in New Atlantis, all so that he can honor his daughter and me and himself and, and rehabilitate his image. No, there's no justifying that at all. So if you're waiting for me to say thank you, we're going to be here a long while. I'm simply looking for you to acknowledge the truth. And let's not forget the importance of our actual endgame. Eliminating the Terramorphs. Securing knowledge of the Lazarus plant. What we've set in motion is going to protect thousands, maybe millions of lives. I'm simply requesting one more life be protected. Mine. I've already sent along the evidence of Orlaza's role in the attacks to the Cabinet, leaving out my own involvement. All I ask is that you confirm as much to the Cabinet. Tell them that it was Orlaz and Orlaz alone. Uh -uh. After all, I do still have a long list of threats to the UC. This needn't be the end of our good works together. Oh, okay, that actually is tantalizing. Working with him, we could continue to rid space of all of the threats to the United Colonies. Sure, but the thing is, if he really wanted to eliminate the Terramorph threat, he could have told the Cabinet about the Lazarus plant. He didn't need to demonstrate the threat of the Lazarus plant in such a dramatic fashion. He could have simply said, hey, there's a plant on Londinian that turns heat leeches into Terramorphs. That's how they start. Go there, see for yourself if you don't believe me, which is ultimately what we all ended up doing. Instead, he chose the dramatic fashion of, of orchestrating this entire thing, causing heat leeches from the spaceport, incidentally, which is a nice touch, Something to turn into terramorphs and kill all of those civilians. Why? That, that's a completely unnecessary. It wasn't the only solution. It wasn't the best solution. And it's the one that he chose. And he's got to pay for it. I'm sorry. What kind of work are we talking about here? Hunting down criminals and other threats to the United Colonies. I expect they'll give me a bit more free range once this is all over. You would help me, like you did with Orlais. Track them down and keep them from doing harm to the United Colonies. Impossible, though, if the Cabinet learns I'm the one responsible for the attacks. And what happened to Orlais? Yeah, we know what happens to guys who work with you. Crimson Scum says when they drop mod support, things are gonna get crazy. That was Crimson Scum's first super chat. Thank you so much, Crimson uh, Scum. I, I believe there are already some really good mods um, available on Nexus mods that are not officially supported, but they're still really good. You think I'm just going to forget the fact that you killed people to accomplish your good works? And how many have you killed to get where you are now? There are no great works that don't cost lives, Captain. Whether it's winning a war, or digging a tram tunnel. So we sacrificed a few dozen in the attacks to possibly protect millions. That seems like a fair exchange to me. I only hope you'll see the same, and leave my name out of the discussions to come. And again, we've, we come to a, a, a typical plot in games like this, where they, the, the villain just can't seem to distinguish the difference between killing and murder. Yes, as the main character, I've killed a lot of people to get where I'm at. But it just so happens that all of those people were trying to kill me. I, it's possible that as the player character, I could have been murdering people left and right, but I haven't. I haven't been murdering people, and that's exactly what he did. He didn't just uh, kill people who were actively in the way of his life living, who were trying to kill him. He murdered innocent people in order to prove a point, which was entirely unnecessary. He's still not explaining why he had to go through all of that. Why he couldn't just go to the cabinet directly. He's already communicating with the cabinet. Why couldn't he go to the cabinet and say, the Lazarus plant... You have plant, my undivided attention. And tell them all about what the Lazarus plant did. The game isn't telling us why that wasn't an option. Why this dramatic spectacle that ended the lives of so many civilians was the best option. 
<clears throat> so we've got uh, three options here. Fine. I'll make sure everything is pinned on Orlais. We've got, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to tell the cabinet. Or we've got, I hope you've enjoyed this talk because once I tell the cabinet, it'll probably be your last. And that's the, ch the option I'm going to choose. That is a pity, Captain. But I'm in no position to negotiate. Though we needn't be enemies, you and I. Just think about the opportunity I've provided here. There are more on the horizon. If you do the right thing. And I still have to make a choice. If I do the right thing. Well, the right thing was would be for the UC to not have kept him alive all these years. I mean, ultimately... Based on the knowledge that we knew at the time, I don't know if he was really... if he needed to be executed for that. What he did during the Battle of Narian, I can forgive. The Freestar Collective shouldn't have armored civilian ships if they didn't want those ships to be fired upon. What the Freestar Collective did was turn their civilian ships into battleships, and so he was perfectly justified in destroying them to protect his fleet. That was fine. Bombing the Londinian spaceport in order to stop the terror wave threat I could understand it. In the heat of the moment, you've got a decision to make. There are monsters literally tearing your city apart. You've got to do something. Was it the right choice? Arguably not. But I could understand a commander in the midst of battle making the choice that he thought best was best at the time. And for all of those reasons, maybe he shouldn't have been um, executed. But to then go even further and kill more innocents in order to prove a point to secure the legacy for your house... That goes a bit too far. And for the UC to keep him alive, breaking the Treaty of Narian for all of these years, it's just Authorized asking for trouble. Only. Your friend has to stay here. Ah, uh, hello. Oh, she's back uh, with us. Yes, we are done. No, the way to wrap this up is to kill him. I mean, he, he's he's got to die for all of this. It's going to make... Um, it's going to make the settled system safer and it's going to prevent it's going to be the best way to prevent another war if anyone knows that the UC has kept this guy alive for all of this all of these times it violates the the treaty and it could lead to another war alright where do I go in here I gotta go in here and then to the president's office well we've got a surprise for Major Hadrian uh, Sanon here She's going to find out her dad is still alive. <laughs> um. Perfect timing. We just got in. So on our end, good news. The microbe and the Aceles are both as effective against heat leeches as they are against terramorphs. Means either plan should work for clearing those critters off our worlds. Considering what the Lazarus plant is capable of, I don't think we can deal with those things fast enough. I already sent along info to the cabinet to get them up to speed. So, what about your end? Did you find anything? Any leads on who might have committed the attacks? I... I want to tell her, but I don't want to tell her now. I want to wait until we talk with the cabinet first. I want to I want to wait until after we talk to the lady who swore us to secrecy. We need to talk with her and tell her what Ve Victus did so that we can finally at least, you know, tell her daughter or tell his daughter. Now is not the time. I want to do it, but not now. Uh, we could say, actually, I'm still gathering some intel. Let me get back to you. We could lie and say it was a man named Dr. Reginald Orlace. He perpetuated the attacks. What? But that's not true. We could say it was Ve Victus. I managed to get him to confess. But she doesn't even know Ve Victus is alive yet. Captain? Captain, please, go on. So the lie pins it on somebody else. I don't want to pin it on Dr. Orlace. I want to talk to, what's what's her name? Where is she? She was in that office, wasn't she? Royal Mistress with a sticker tip. Thank you so much, Royal Mistress. She's not behind her desk. Was She was back here, wasn't she? Yeah. Sometimes success is found in unlikely allies. Ah. 
so we can't tell her. Howdy. Alright, well, we'll save right before this, because I don't want this to lock me in. And we'll lie to her for now, because I'm hoping we have an opportunity. So, did you turn up anything on the attacks? Any idea who might have been involved? I'm hoping we'll have an opportunity to tell everyone the truth later, but for now we're going to continue to lie just so that we can preserve some knowledge that could start another global war. Actually, settled systems war. Orlais? Reginald Orlais? He did this? I didn't think he was still alive. You're sure it was him? It was him, but in conjunction with someone else. We could say you knew Orlais? Oh yeah. Both worked for UC Defense Research way back when. Different departments, but everyone knew Orlais. Had a mean eye for weapons tech. And a meaner temper. Wasn't exactly a surprise when he fled instead of standing trial after the colony war. But finding out he's taken up mass murder in the years since. That is a shock. You're sure about this? <laughs> Chad is saying that I should have chosen the still gathering intel option. Oh, I thought choosing that option would have backed me out and I wouldn't have been able to proceed with the quest. Let's see if we can try this again. You'd said it was Reginald or Lays who was responsible for the attacks? <laughs> You're positive he's our man. No, we can't. All right, so let's load the previous save. The one we just made. Because that dialogue option didn't do what I wanted to do. So. Uh, let's say, actually, I'm still gathering some intel. Let me get back to you. <sighs> do what you have to. We'll be here. Oh, it's, it's as I thought. So we have to choose either Ve Victus or Orlais. Which makes me think that this is really the moment. So, did you... If this is the moment, then we have to say that it was Ve Victus. Because saying that I'm gathering intel doesn't let us pr uh, progress with the, um, with the quest. Back in time says, no, not yet. Okay. Orlais. Well, we have the save. We can always go back. We can say, what, you don't believe me? Didn't say that. Just surprised to find out my former colleague is now dropping alien predators into unsuspecting cities. Just want to make sure we've got the right man. You're certain. Positive. The evidence is on its way to the cabinet as we speak. If he is responsible, let us hope the cabinet deals with it swiftly and harshly. That's some impressive work. So then give us the rundown. Where's Orlais now? Were you able to bring him in? I mean, was, was bringing him in even an option? He committed suicide. We could lie and say Orlais is dead. Things went badly. Still shaken up. Rather not talk about it. We could say, Guy tried to kill me! Last mistake he ever made. Or we could say, I tried, but he took his own life instead of coming peacefully. I'm sorry to hear that. Those sorts of missions are always tough. Any idea why he might have done it? Or what he was doing with the plant? We could lie and say he thought he was doing the right thing, making sure no one could ignore the Lazarus plant. We could lie and say he found the plant while searching Londinian for weapon data and chose to use it against the UC. Or we could say, not sure, never found a confession. I can't imagine the amount of work it took to deploy the Lazarus plant off-world. Strange to go to all that trouble and not state your reasons. Well, the man knew how to hold a grudge. I wouldn't be shocked if this was him getting back at the UC for trying to put him on trial. Hmm. I guess. Well, at least he won't be able to hurt anybody else now. Might be the best we could ask for, given the circumstances. So I guess there's nothing else to do but get this all in front of the cabinet. Unless there were other things we needed to discuss. They had better give this me an might opportunity. Be our last opportunity to talk things through before the cabinet weighs in on a decision regarding the Terramorphs. <laughs> They're putting so much weight in this conversation, but I want the conversation with the cabinet. Uh, we could say, what kind of risks are there if we decide to bring back the Asilis? Asilis aren't hostile to humans, but they are mega fauna. If someone decides to pick a fight with one, it could get ugly. 
But they've already been spread far and wide once before when the UC was raising them as livestock, so the risk of introducing them to new worlds is minimal. Using them to clean up the terramorphs and leeches, though, it's not going to be nearly as expedient as the microbe would be. Given what we know now about the Lazarus plant, the speed of the job does matter. But going with the Aceles, we're at least dealing with known risks. So both approaches to clearing our worlds are effective against heat leeches? They are. Microbe needed minimal adjustment to account for heat leech anatomy. And the Aceles seem like they're even better at tracking leeches than morphs. Hell of a sight to watch, though, when they catch them. Like an open airlock guzzling angry spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Which method of dealing with the terramorphs are you two leaning towards? Microbe is going to make the cleanup a whole lot quicker. If we're concerned about this Lazarus plant getting deployed again, that's the way to go. The cabinet can secure the Lazarus plant, and then we're not risking any surprises when it comes to dealing with a microbe. You're being paranoid. You know the science. You know we can make this safe. I do know the science. I also know math. And a one in a million chance of a mutation isn't zero. So I guess we're still in discussion. Probably best at this point to let the cabinet weigh in. See if they have a preference. <clears throat> I agree. Nothing else on my end. Let's head in there. And here we go. Well, I've kept the truth from her this entire time, so this is going to come as quite a shock to her. I hope she doesn't feel betrayed, but I was sworn to secrecy. I wish I could have taken her aside, her, over there, and told her what happened before doing it in such a public setting. Let's do another save here really quickly, just in case. Welcome back, all of you. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. But according to Hadrian's report and the second one I just received, it seems the Terramorph attack on New Atlantis was no random occurrence, but a planned strike. Is what I'm reading here true? Is that second report from who I think it's from? This report comes from a particularly confidential source both you and I are familiar with, yes. Among the reasons its findings are so alarming. Now, is it true? Was the attack on New Atlantis planned? We could say yes, but don't you worry, we've found the culprit. Or we could say that's correct, ma'am. It was a deliberate attack. My god. An attack? Using terror morphs? How is that possible? You will all receive a full briefing once we're done here. So then, is what the second report claims correct? Did Reginald Orlais commit these attacks, Captain? We could say, I'm sorry, I need a moment to verify something. We could say, Hadrian, I think you should tell them. We could lie and say that it was Orlais, or we could say that report isn't the whole truth. Orlais had help, but Ve Victus organized the attacks. That's what I wanted to say. That's what we're going to say. Ve Victus? My father, what are you- He did what? That, that, that's impossible. He doesn't have the kind of access to- Clearly, he made his own access, Chief Sarkin. Madam President, I have been saying for years that not dealing with that man was going to end in tragedy. Ve Victus? Alive all this time? <laughs> and you all knew? You allowed this to happen, and now the best you can do is call it merely a mistake? You are not yeah. fit to lead! Yeah! Enough! <laughs> I hope everyone here understands that what has just been shared is a state secret of the highest order. This information does not leave this room. Now, that's quite the accusation you're leveling, considering Francois Sanon has not left containment for the better part of two decades. You have evidence to back this up? We could play, we could say, why would I make something up like that? Or we could play the emergency recorder snippet. It just transformed a terramorph out of thin air. An invisible weapon. No planet would be safe. Heavens help us. It, 
I is that actually him? I'd know that voice anywhere. That's Francois. He knew they could do this. And said nothing. He's a sociopath. Plain and simple, ma'am. Officer, please collect that recording. Uh -oh. Yes, ma'am. Uh -oh. Begging your pardon, Captain. Uh -oh. We'll, of course, be launching a full investigation into how this could have happened. Though I have little doubt the Admiral will be quick to share all he knows on the subject once confronted with that recording. Chief Yassine, can you send one of your interrogators to have a little chat with the Admiral? I'll issue the order immediately. Good. Combined with everything else you all have uncovered. Well, I don't think the United Colonies can thank you enough. We failed the people of the Colonies by not dealing with Vavicta sooner. I intend to rectify that mistake immediately. Good. I guess um, AI voice stuff didn't exist, doesn't exist in this universe, because I could have faked it, right? I could have taken his voice and faked it, but I guess they'll take that as, as evidence. <clears throat> we could say, can you ensure he has no more outside contacts? He used UC functionaries to get his message out. That's... That's truly disconcerting to hear. But cutting off Vae Victus's contact with the outside world is likely to be just the beginning of his punishment. What's going to happen to him? That will be up to the cabinet to decide. But I don't appreciate our mercy being taken advantage of. We could say, ma'am, I would request his life be spared. He did help us against the terror morphs after all. Interesting. Even now, we can try to spare his life. We could say, good. The world will be better off without Ve Victus in it. We could say, whatever the cabinet thinks is the right course of action. This is a tricky one. Only because he might have more missions for me. <laughs> and that's what I'm worried, I'm worried about missing out on. I'd, I'd kind of like to do more of those missions for him. Um, but that said, I think the safest thing for the colonies is probably that he be executed. The fact that they kept him alive and continued Silence to work with him. Silence gets us nowhere closer to our answers. That they continued to work with him all this time was foolhardy. Was absolutely foolhardy and it put the entire peace treaty at risk. So we'll say, good, the world will be better without Ve Victus in it. Even though that's probably going to piss off our friend. Well, maybe it won't. I'm inclined to agree, Captain. Now, with our villain unmasked, we can attend to the other matters at hand. With the threads you've brought together here, the Lazarus plant, the attacks, the heat leeches, the three of you have likely spared thousands of lives. But it now falls to the cabinet to ensure this can never happen again. As such, the cabinet will be securing the Lazarus plant on Londinian. All materials related to the plant will be classified to ensure no one else learns its true nature. A sound decision, Madam President. Can it be contained, though? The Lazarus plant is a native plant on the planet. How do you contain a plant that is native and possibly ubiquitous to the entire planet? Unless you just prevent people from landing on it. Because it probably grows in other locations. What sorts of measures will the UC be taking to protect the Lazarus plant? Well, luckily the natural hostility of Londinian makes keeping out trespassers relatively easy. But we'll ensure its growth is contained, that access to the plant is only permitted via highly regulated clearances, and that our troop presence on Londinian is increased. Securing the plant isn't enough. It should be wiped out. Ma'am, I believe the other factions should be involved in securing the Lazarus plant. Or agreed. That's the right call, ma'am. This is interesting. And you know what? It's, it's a great token of peace. The fact, I mean, if they could do this, if the UC could reach out to House Varun and the Free Star Collective and tell them what they've discovered, and work with them to secure the plant, I think that's the best call. Tell the Free Star Collective? Wow. So they have another tool to utilize against us? I'm in agreement. I fail to see the value here. We could say, no, I guess you're right, or the UC doesn't exactly have the best track record. This would ensure good behavior from both sides. 
or it would demonstrate to the collective that the UC isn't planning to secretly use this down the line. Both of these are great. Agreed. Any effort to de-escalate the situation should be considered. Being as open as possible would be a valuable move. Huh. That is an interesting idea. A grand gesture. To further display this cabinet doesn't think like those of the past. Yes. The observers on Mars have proven such a gesture can bear fruit. So, you want us to make nice with the Collective by sharing our state secrets? No, I want us to display plainly the UC's actual intentions, that the plant will never be used as a weapon again. Hmm. Huh. That does sound worthwhile, Chief Kalkarni. Very well. We'll get the Collective involved in the management. Smart. Thank you for the suggestion, Captain. So then, to our final topic. The Cabinet has agreed to implement a plan that will deal with the Terramorph, and now also Heat Leech presence on human worlds. In fact, we've already begun enacting measures to check all UC ports and settlements for undiscovered nests. But we all understand this is only a partial solution. The project we're embarking on will be a long and difficult one. So our first step must be deciding how exactly this all will be handled. Madam President, this microbe is clearly too much of a risk. The Asilis are the safer approach. To someone with limited knowledge of biology, perhaps? The technology behind the microbe is solved science, Madam President. It isn't dangerous. Using it to wipe out the Terramorphs would be the quickest path to protecting humanity. And fast results always lead to the best outcomes, don't they? As you can see, there remains debate among the Cabinet. We were hoping your group might issue a recommendation. Major? I, uh, yes, ma'am. Sorry. I'm just now learning about my father being alive. I'm sorry, Major, though I hope you understand why this had to be kept in the strictest confidence. Would you like a moment? I, uh, I'll be fine. We're similarly split. I feel so awful. It's only the Captain who's yet to make a final way in. I see. Captain, I know this may not be your area of expertise, but we'd like to know your take on the matter. I feel so bad for her that we had to keep the knowledge away from her. It rocked her. Did you see that? She just, <clears throat> she had to take a moment to collect herself after standing there, listening to everybody around her talking about her father being alive because everyone in this room knew but her. <laughs> it's just such an awful thing. Okay. Um, we could say I need a moment to collect my thoughts or I still had questions about the methods. I don't really have questions about the methods anymore. We could say, do we need to do anything? Shouldn't securing the Lazarus plant be sufficient? I mean, no, obviously not. Uh, okay, uh, it's the um, wipe them out with the microbe or deploy the Asilis. Uh, I'm inclined to deploy the Asilis because... We're waiting on you, Captain. I'm, I'm figuring it out. I'm, this is how I do it. I talk to myself and I'm talking to chat. We're doing this together. A microbe, because uh, she made a great point, Hadrian did earlier. That a microbe may be stable, and it might have, you know, a 0, 0.000 chance, 0, 0.01 chance of um, evolving in the future, but they do mutate, and they mutate quickly. They don't mutate on the scale of uh, mammals and reptiles and other creatures that have had millions of years to mutate. They mutate extremely quickly, which means they evolve extremely quickly, and I'm hesitant to release something into the atmosphere of every world inhabited by humans that has the potential to mutate into something that we can't anticipate. Gather your thoughts and let's continue. Just because all of the scientists gathered around here don't anticipate it doing something bad doesn't mean it can't. And so even though it's gonna be slower, I'm more inclined to choose a solution that has uh, a 100% chance of finding success slowly with no side effects than a solution that has a 100% chance of of working quickly, but with the chance of side effects. So we're going to deploy the Asilis is this as the safest route. That's my vote. I'm in full agreement. No need be delving into unpredictable sciences. The first step in a bold new future. Bolder, better, and brighter. <laughs> well, I need to write that one down for later. Order, please. And Major Sanan, Dr. Walker. 
you'd find this acceptable? The captain is normally a trustworthy source. And, uh, <laughs> in this case, continues to be. He speaks for us all, ma'am. Then the matter is settled. We'll begin the process immediately. Today marks day one for the United Colonies Terramorph Management Division, <laughs> making you three the founding members of the TMD. As befits such a group, the cabinet wanted to display its gratitude. Today, we will be adding three new Class One citizens to our ranks. Class One? For the three of us? Are you joking? What he means to say is, thank you, ma'am. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. What is a Class One citizen? It's a status reserved only for those who've dedicated their lives to the United Colonies or done great things for its cause. Class Ones enjoy an ample credit disbursement, an additional reduction on the cost of colonial goods. And I'm told the penthouse is rather impressive. Hey, I'm down for a penthouse. So long as I'm getting paid, I'm happy we could say or thank you, Madam President. You all have earned it. Now, there's much to be done. Major Sinan, Dr. Walker, I hope you two are willing to continue your efforts spearheading the TMD's research on Mars. We'd be honored, ma'am. As for you, Captain, the Vanguard will be providing much of the on-the-ground support for the TMD. As a member of both the Vanguard and the TMD, I believe you'll have your pick of duties. All right. Speak to your commander. Tuala, if I recall correctly. He should be able to provide you with assignments going forward, plus help you collect the benefits that come with being named Class One. On behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our sincerest gratitude. This meeting is adjourned. And there we go. I have things I wish to discuss with you when you have time. Yeah. Adrian? I can't believe you knew about my father all this time and lied to me. I thought we were... Well, I thought we at least respected one another more than that. Who? <laughs> Don't act like this was anything more than a professional relationship. Or I was just doing what the UC asked. You of all people should understand that. Or, Hadrian, I'm so sorry. They swore me to secrecy. I would have told you otherwise. You swore. You... You swore. You were just doing your duty, after yeah. all. <laughs> I know, I know what a burden... What a burden that can be. Look, I, I guess I'm not thrilled that you kept it from me for this long, but... I suppose I can see past one moment of monumental boneheadedness. <laughs> boneheadedness. This time. This time? Oh, come on. Oh, so we can be friends again? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Uh, we could say, and let's not forget the times I saved your bacon. Well, we don't need to bring that up. We'll just say this means a lot, Hadrian. Thank you. Of course. This is just hard to find out all at once. You know, my heart stopped when you first said it. That he was still alive. That I might have to see him again. I mean, I had to, right? It could be my last chance. And then I realized all confronting him now would prove is that he still has some sway over my life. And I know I can never escape the Sanan legacy. His and mine but I'm not about to let my past sully a future that's, well, that's brighter than it has been in a long time. Oh, I'm so glad to and hear that. And that's thanks to you. We've both got our assignments. And I guess I should get a move on. Good luck out there, Captain. <clears throat> Why don't you come with me? You know I can't do that. There's too much to be done with the TMD. And I'm not about to let Percival have all the fun. But I do appreciate the sentiment. Hopefully we cross paths again soon. I'd like that. Take care. 
Oh, I feel so much better about that. I thought she was going to hate me forever. <laughs> I mean, I did what I had to do, right? I, I swore to secrecy. It was for the safety of the settled systems and all that jazz. Ah, oh, that makes me feel a lot better. Okay, Andrea, you had something you wanted to say. Let's do a quick save. I have been thinking about what we talked about before. The idea of purpose in one's life. You told me that fun was important. I assumed you were joking and dismissed it out of hand. Yeah, you did. But, having thought about it, I wonder now if you were right. Or at least if I were too quick to reject the idea. I have been single-minded in my pursuits. I have always believed the decisions I made were necessary, that there was no other option. I have sacrificed much to be where I am now. And... I'm starting to wonder if it has been worth it. Hmm. <clears throat> we should have this discussion some other time, or it's okay to have doubts. Just don't let them paralyze you. If it got you here, then it was right. It doesn't matter. There's no way to change the past. You're the only one who can answer that. I'm inclined to say it's okay to have doubts. Just don't let them paralyze you. Doubts have never been something I would consider. I have told you that I am not one to discuss my past. And yet... Our past should never define us. Or we've all done things we regret. Or you don't have to talk about anything you don't want to. Or whatever you've done, I won't hold it against you. I mean, these are all good, in a way. I guess I'll go with our past should never define us. <sighs> I am not sure I believe that. I... <sighs> promised to provide for my family. That meant working with smugglers to procure supplies we could not acquire any other way. I have spent my adult life away from my home. Jumping from one planet to the next, living in dangerous conditions, often surrounded by violence. Hard to believe your family would put you through that, or it's clearly taken a toll on you. Or everyone's had their share of hardships. Well, I mean, her family didn't put her through that. She did it for her family. We'll say it's clearly taken a toll on you. It certainly influenced the way I see the universe. I was convinced from the beginning that it was unwise to let anyone get too close. I had, maybe not quite friends, but people I cared about. Yet there was always a distance I could not reach across. I often find other people complicated and confusing. It seemed easier to not become attached, especially when circumstances meant I, I might never see them again, with no warning. I've never paid much attention to who else is around. <laughs> we are social creatures. Life is better when we're surrounded by others. Or going it alone has always worked for me. While I can empathize, and at times I'm even attracted to a solitary lifestyle. It's true that we weren't meant to be alone, and it's better for our mental well-being to be with other people. So I'll say that we are social creatures. Life is better when we are surrounded by others. Until now, I have disagreed strongly with that idea. But therein lies my concern. What I am trying to say is that I now wonder whether it has been the right decision to distance myself from others. Keeping things bottled up isn't a good idea. Everybody has baggage. It's how you deal with it that matters. Or don't let this get in the way of our mission. Or I'm here for you if you need me. I mean, she's talking with us because she knows we're here for her. So that seems redundant. This seems unnecessary. So... Let's go with keeping things bottled up isn't a good idea. Yes, I, I know. We which is why I am trying to open up about this. I am grateful for your patience and your willingness to listen. Okay, I guess that's it. Hopefully we answered right. 
Well, I want to go see my house. I've got a new house, right? I got to go to Tuwala. I've seen that show a million times. You can't have those. They Wait, Twala's not at the spaceport. Why am I going there? All right, let me let me check my quest log real quick. Maybe I have the wrong quest checked. Yeah, that's sending me to the ship. Why? Oh, it's because I have that tagged. Speak to Commander Twella. It's now an activity. Yay, I want to get my house. Hmm? Yes? I didn't they say anything. They aren't compatible on any level. Financially, emotionally, physically. <laughs> and it ruined the plot. They're still talking about their favorite TV show. <laughs> Citizens of a New Atlantis. Nothing else to worry about. Well, well, I've got to say, this is a first. I've never had a Class 1 citizen in my ranks before. Congratulations, Captain. Can you just tell me what a Class 1 citizen is? We already learned what that is. Or I'm just here to collect whatever it is this Class 1 thing pays. But we can say thank you, Commander. It is an honor. No need to thank me. You brought this all on yourself. I've already gone ahead and processed your Class 1 benefits. All UC goods and services should now have a thanks for protecting the colonies discount. Hey. And the credits should be in your accounts now. All right. But to get into your penthouse, you'll have to pay a visit to the Affilion Realty Office. They should be able to grant you access. 12,000 credits, all right. <clears throat> Where's the Realty Office? Just out the front door and across the plaza, by the embassies. Look for the Affilion sign. Rather drink engine oil than live in New Atlantis, but at least the price is right. <laughs> Glad to see the UC give credit where credit's due, or that's incredibly generous. Higher-ups wanted to make sure you know how much they appreciate what you've done. But with all that squared, it's time to get you a new assignment. There are your standard Vanguard missions, putting those pilot skills to use defending UC space. Or you could help the TMD in cleaning up Terramorphs. Oh, and I got a request from Dr. Walker. Wanted your help collecting biological samples to keep an eye out for any, uh, new alien threats on the horizon. Any of those missions call to you? Um, so these are all radiant quests, aren't they? We could say I've done my duty, Commander. I think I'm going to take some time off from aliens. Actually, I'd like to start by helping out Percival with these new alien threats. We've already killed Terramorphs. We've already done Vanguard missions. Let's uh, see what it's like to help out Percival. Sure. He'll have all the specifics. If you find yourself looking for more work, you know where to find me. Right. Penthouse. Make sure I have the right thing tracked this time. Um, I don't want to speak to Percival for that. It doesn't give me an activity to go to the penthouse. Looks like I have to go there myself. Right, right across the plaza, he said. Next to the embassies. Something reality. The Outland Group. Okay, that's the Lodge. There's the Embassy. That must be the reality? The Realtors? Ah, uh, yes. They build a monument to the people they lost, but not the people they killed. 
Talk with Andrea? Can we speak for a moment? Again? There's something amiss. All right. Andrea just really wants to chat today. It is a relief to know that the Terramorphs are being dealt with. But are you sure this Asili's creature is the right way to do it? Chad is saying I just ran past it. Okay. We'll say we're just helping nature take its course. Germs made in a lab sound way too risky. Or slow and steady wins the race, as they say. Let's go germs made in a lab sound too risky. Where Terramorphs are concerned, I do not believe there is a way to remove risk from the equation. Perhaps an experimental microbe has its own risks, but what of the risks to who knows how many human lives until the Asilis can do its job? Great point. Um, I think I made the right call, but I mean, she does raise a good point. I still think I made the right call. I appreciate your conviction. I suppose time will tell. And I must say, I find it curious that you would agree keeping the Lazarus plant around is a good idea. It seems an additional unnecessary risk. I mean, I don't want to keep it around. Um, the UC was going to keep it around anyway. But you could have changed their minds. They would have listened to you. At least the Freestar Collective will also know of its existence. Otherwise, I worry it would be too tempting for the UC to use as a weapon. Well, it is good to know that this particular threat is behind us. And you have done a service to all who live in the settled systems. She disagreed with two of the three choices we made. Honestly, Sorry, I didn't know that coming. removing right. it was a choice. All right, behind Andrea. All right, this is just masked. So, over here? Left, says the chat. Oh my god, it's right there. Athlon Realty. I guess you? I'm always ready to make a deal. Well, well. If it isn't the United Colony's newest Class 1 citizen. You've made quite a name for yourself in New Atlantis. What In fact, this? the higher-ups want to thank you for your dedicated service by giving you one of the nicest pieces of real estate in the city. It's a premium penthouse at the top of Mercury Tower. Best location in New Atlantis, in my professional opinion. What do you say? It'll just take a second to get you registered as the owner. I'm interested. Great. You're in for a real treat. It's one of my favorite apartments in the city. Okay, you're all set. Your new home's located in Mercury Tower in the residential district. You'll love the place. It has a gorgeous floor plan and an unbeatable view of the city. <laughs> now that you're an owner, I'm sure I'll be seeing you around town. Not that I'll be able to recognize you. I couldn't get a good look at you. Building materials added to ship's cargo. What was that? <clears throat> okay, let's go check out our new home. <laughs> Perhaps not the wisest decision. You can decorate, says the chat. Oh. I can decorate it? Cool. Mercury Tower. Oh, that movie was epic. Definitely better than the last Interceptor. But why did they replace the handler? I thought the actress was amazing. She turned it on. Your home is an outpost, says chat. Oh, yes. E oh, look at this. My home is an outpost. Let's get in the view. Let's take in that view. Oh. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's 
beautiful. What a view. Oh man, this is even better than the last view we saw. What is this, pantry? I guess it's a pantry. Well, I really gotta decorate the whole thing, huh? Bathroom, nice. Bedroom. With a balcony. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. With an entire view of the city from my master bedroom. Look, I can even see my ship from here. Hello. Master bath. Cool. So, uh, how do I decorate? Laundry room. Guest bedroom. All right, is it like press? <clears throat> is it like the settlement system and Fallout? Press V. <laughs> Hold B. Scanner then outpost. Scanner. Then decorate. Ooh, workbenches. Oh, wow. This is very familiar. Oh, we could have a... Oh, that's too soon! It's too soon! They give me a portrait of Barrett? <laughs> too much! It's very nice. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna love this. I could get lost in this. That's the problem. When it comes to settlement building, I could get lost in this. Wow. So cool. But another time. Right. Let's do a hard save. I think this is a good time to end it, everybody. We've been live for six and a half hours, and we completed the UC quest line. I'm so thrilled with it. Gotta say, this has been great. This quest was just brilliant. The way that they gave us so many ways that we could have interacted with the quest to really change the outcome, change who knew about what, uh, it, just so many player choices that made sense within the context of the quest. Uh, the story itself, was I felt like I was uncovering something every single time. Plenty of combat. It's, it was great. It was just really well done. I've got very little criticism of the way this whole thing turned out. Even the characters looked amazing. They were all interesting in their own ways. They all had a place that made sense within the context of the story. The voice acting was great. I mean, it was just wonderful. So I'm thrilled to see what they do with Aquila and the Freestar Collective story. I can't wait to start that because this has been a breath of fresh air and it was so much fun. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. I'm glad that we, we got to get through this entire thing together. Uh, tomorrow, I have a number of appointments, which means I'm probably not going to be able to stream. However, if something happens, there's a cancellation or whatever, I might try to go live tomorrow. <clears throat> but I made today's broadcast extra long uh, just so that I can make up for not being able to broadcast tomorrow. I've got more shorts that I'm going to be publishing all this week, and I'm working hard to try and get a lore video done for the weekend, but no promises, as I'm trying to do a video on the ECS Constant, and I kind of really need um, that last little bit, being able to go visit it after telling them to go explore the settled systems that I haven't quite found yet. So maybe I'll be able to find it. Maybe I'll use console commands to get it. Either way, I've got a lot of work ahead of myself, so no promises on a lore video, even though I am working hard on it. But that's it for me tonight. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for coming, everybody. And if I don't see you tomorrow, I will definitely see you Thursday with more lore videos and more live streams. Thanks again. Bye-bye, everybody.